you're going to receive. LSU, which way do you want to kick? Okay, go ahead and put your backs to that goal. Clemson shall receive the opening kickoff. Good luck, guys. Let's have a great game. And Orgeron watches defense on the field first to build all this crowd noise and show confidence in that unit against Trevor Lawrence. Maria Taylor with Dabo Sweeney. Maria. Thanks, Chris. Well, Coach, your team's been doubted all season, but you told them they'll have a chance to prove that they are the best. What makes you confident that they'll be able to win this matchup tonight? Well, I mean, we got a good team. I like my guys, so I watch them practice every day. Got a great group of people that love each other. Hoping we got a chance. All right, thanks for your time, Coach. Now we send it over to Tom Rinaldi. Maria thank, Maria, thank you very much. Ed, all it's taken to get here, all it means to you, how do you manage the challenge of the emotion in coaching this team to a win? You know, after the first hit, that all goes out. It's about fundamentals, technique, play for 60 minutes. They're a good team. We're a good team. Let's battle. Appreciate the time. Go take it. The cut at Orgeron's head came from a punch that he gave himself after a practice to get his guys fired up. He's a unique individual, Kirk. He really is. He has a team that is incredibly fired up against a, the old veteran Clemson team that's been there and done that. That leadership and experience would tend to give the advantage to the Clemson Tigers, but uh, we'll see about the emotion of, Cle of LSU here early. Orge Run hoping for an early stop, hoping the crowd will continue to make life tough on Lawrence. They've got the busiest and the best kickoff man in the country. Avery Atkins, a sophomore from Auburn, Alabama, to boot it away. Travis Etienne hoping he'll have a chance against all odds to return this kick. Comes from Jennings, Louisiana, about 100 miles away. Tigers versus the Tigers for the title. Should be a lot of fun. It's a line drive that lands a few yards behind the end zone. So here comes Trevor Lawrence. Sublime performance against the Crimson Tide of the championship game a year ago. Never thrown a pick in a postseason game, but boy, he had to show his toughness. The helmet shot against Ohio State. He thought he'd hurt himself. They were down 16 points at that point. He ran and threw them to victory. Yeah, 16 carries on the night. He had to really, his legs had to be the difference in that game. 25 and 0 as a starting quarterback. Pressed a little bit early, trying to live up to the hype. Settled down in the second half of the season. It's only thrown one interception in the last seven games. Looking to throw, and it's Justin Ross. A trick play right off the bat. ETN takes the handoff from the receiver. LSU not fooled. Christian Fulton made the play. Yeah, L LSU flying around. Clemson trying to catch them napping a little bit, trying to get the ball to the outside. ETN's going to have to have a big night. T. Higgins didn't play well against Ohio State, got dinged up, will have to play incredibly well in the perimeter. Chase on the best pass rusher, and Stingley, the top freshman corner in the nation. Free play, and it's caught downfield. Ross, after the LSU defense had jumped offside, Lawrence makes the most of the free play. Well, Clemson felt the scouting report on the LSU man-to-man. -man. They play a ton of man, but they give you outside leverage. They take away the fade. Offside. They take away the outside defense throw. Defense in the neutral zone at the snap. The penalties decline. The result of the play is a first down. So instead of being able to go to the outside, he pumps to the outside, and Trevor felt that. He felt Jason, who's amped up in this building, jump, and then he knew, see how he goes to the inside? But Fulton gave him that move. Clemson researched that in these two weeks in prep, knew they could get that inside crease. 35-yard gain, looking to throw again. ETN gets the lob from Lawrence and has space, breaks a tackle, and is dragged down near the 26-yard line. Tigers threatening instantly. A little screen, little slip screen, get him out in space. Travis ETN just needs room to work with. Outstanding, the difference maker in this offense. Nice call, and how about the touch there by Trevor Lawrence going over top of the LSU defense. Throwing again. This is Amari Rogers muscled out. ETN as a receiver was a monster against Ohio State. Those two touchdown receptions yeah. were huge. Yeah, Ohio State won the line of scrimmage. They couldn't run the ball. They feel they can run him maybe on the edges, but they really think he could be a difference in the pass game like that. Isn't it interesting? LSU, this crowd, this environment, Clemson's answer to that is attack 
aggressive, going after LSU, getting them on their heels, taking this crowd out of the game. Four plays, four passes. Lynn J. Dixon is now to the right of Lawrence in the backfield. He's got the football trying to get wide, but the LSU defense sets the edge and knocks him down for a one-yard loss. Rashard Lawrence on the play. Yeah, Jacoby Stevens, number three, does a really good job of setting the edge. He didn't necessarily make the tackle, but he got off the block of J.C. Chalk, forced him back to the inside. Dixon back to the inside, where the linebackers led by Queen are able to make the play with that great speed. First, third down. Clemson converting at 46% this season. He recognizes pressure right there. Let's see if LSU gets out of that. A dummy called Grant Delpit tipped his hand, showing pressure from the inside. Looks like he's backing off now. Like fucking two. Here he comes. And they've got Lawrence for a sack back at the 36. Delpit, Kirk, it was who got through. Well, they, I think Clemson felt they had him. And then they backed out of it. He's right here. He kind of sits back, and then he comes a little bit on a delay. I think it's good coverage downfield, nowhere for him to go with the football. So Delpit, even though he's kind of in a safe blitz, eventually gets home. So that forces a long field goal attempt. B.C. Potter is the sophomore from South Carolina. Check it. They're not going to go for what would be a, a career long. He was hitting from this range in the pregame warm-up, but instead Sweeney decides to send out Will Spires, the punter, and now with one second to go, I'm going to take a delay of game here back him up a little bit interesting trying to pin LSU's offense back deep in their first possession hey, the way Joe Burrow is executed I don't offense. blame him Five yard penalty. You, know, you take a Still shot at a down. field goal there especially early in the game and if you end up missing it you're giving Joe Burrow great fields position so two chunk plays for Clemson they threaten but the big sack by Delpit stalls the opening possession Spires very good. He's knocked a dozen punts dead inside the 10 yard line. Hits it high with backspin, and the coverage team able to corral it at about the six yard line. So, pinned back against his goal line. Heisman Trophy winner Joe Burrow takes over. LSU's first possession coming up. Joe Burrow comes from Athens in Southeast Ohio, star in hoops and in football, not recruited by his dream school, Nebraska, where his dad and brothers played. Went to Ohio State, played three seasons there, didn't get much of a chance, transfers to LSU. Last year, pretty good. This year, off the charts, sensational, and broke records for the margin of victory in the Heisman Trophy. Plays the quarterback position like a middle linebacker. Incredible ability to process and get the ball out quickly. Clemson's got to come up with some plans to try to get him out of rhythm early. Empty backfield, five playmakers flanking Burrow. And he's going to scramble and stays alive and chucks it downfield and it's caught at the 43 by the tight end Thaddeus Moss that's part of Burrow extending plays but there is a flag down back near the line of scrimmage so hold on and there's got to be a man downfield an in injury down downfield offense number 73 five yard penalty and the left guard, Adrian McGee, and it's a long time in pass protection. And he eventually gets across the line of scrimmage. You'll see him, but how about the job here? This is what makes this guy so good. Burrow, they've got it. Foster's unable to bring him down. And then there you see the offensive lineman right here. They're a good seven or eight yards downfield when he makes that, that throw. So take away a potential big play, the creativity. And by the way, Brent Middleville's first play, bringing Isaiah Simmons off the slot on a blitz. Negates the 36-yard gain, makes it first and 13. Tigers rush only three, and short throw is incomplete. That time they were all over Moss with Simmons. Well, everybody wanted to know what Brent Venables would do with two weeks to go. What I just saw is a lot like what Kevin Steele did. Three down linemen, one linebacker, seven defensive backs, a 3-1-7. He's trying to get more athletic ability, more speed on the field. So Nolan Turner, 24 is out there. 
14 is also out there. Denzel Johnson, who's not played a ton of ball. But tonight, he's starting against this prolific offense and all these weapons. Mentioned the Auburn game. They gave LSU trouble in the red zone, although the Tigers did gain more than 500 yards against Steele's defense. Edwards Hilaire, they fake it to him on the slant, incomplete. So again, tight coverage, and Jamar Chase couldn't come up with it. Third and long. That's a great matchup back into the boundary in the length of A.J. Terrell. All he's heard about for two weeks. I love how physical he gets at the line. Gets away maybe with a little bit of a grab there. But I love how Brent Venables is challenging these receivers on the outside. Trying to, again, disrupt that timing. Try to affect nine with all these talented receivers. Clemson's defense has been a nightmare for opponents on third down who convert just 31%. Clemson fans are loud right behind Burrow from the end zone. Gets it out quickly, complete, but in heavy traffic, Justin Jefferson is going nowhere. They've scored opening drive touchdowns in six consecutive games, punted only once this season, and that was against Auburn. Well, Brent Venables has a reputation of bringing pressure. This time, that's why he gets the ball out so quickly on third down, but instead he rushes four, has eyes on the quarterback, Quick throw by Burrow, and it allows the rest of that Tiger secondary to rally to the football. 29-year-old lefty punter, Zach von Rosenberg, to boot it away. Amari Rogers comes up and fields it at the 42. Spins free of one tackle, but it'll be knocked down right there. But Sweeney playing field position. It works out perfectly as Lawrence will take over in plus territory for the second drive. Yeah, that's exactly why he did it. Confidence that he has in his defense in the first series after this long wait goes to the Clemson Tigers. It's the first time since the Auburn game that LSU's not been able to put a sustain a drive or put points on the board. But if put that in a little bit to the side, the 3-1-7 that Auburn played with is what Clemson puts on the field defensively in that first drive. Lawrence was four for four in that opening drive for 51 yards. Etienne, his first carry, accelerates, and he'll get about four. Jacob Phillips, the top tackler in LSU, made the stop. I think the best chance to run the ball because of the size of the interior of LSU's defensive front. They're going to have to get him on the outside where he has great acceleration and they can put a dent on that defensive line on the edge and try to get that edge and get yards, positive yards. Second and five play action and a slant incomplete. Tight coverage there against Amari Rogers by Kerry Vincent Jr. Well, he got there early. We're seeing these officials early in this game. Let him play. Hey, Vincent got there. Watch five. Jump this route to slant. Gets there a little quick and a little early with a push in the back. Easily could have been called. Third and five. This is where they've got to be able to win. Right there at the top with T. Higgins. One on one. Lawrence is looking to the right and launches downfield over the shoulder just a little bit too far for Higgins. Christian Fulton, the stud corner in coverage. Now they went with both their most talented receivers into the boundary. See Justin Ross and T. Higgins. It creates one-on-one. -on -one. There's that outside leverage. A little pull there, but the ball not really catchable. Outside leverage forces Higgins to the inside. And just not able to connect. Pretty good coverage there by LSU. So for the second time in two possessions, Clemson gets inside the LSU 40, but stalls and here's Spires trying to do what he did about uh, four minutes ago, which has been LSU deep. Big fella may have kicked this one a little farther than he meant to. And even though it's not caught cleanly, coverage team does its job perfectly. Burrow backed up again. Back after these messages, you're watching the House Football Playoff National Championship game presented by AT&T. The College Football Playoff National Championship game is presented by AT&T and in part by the Ford F-150, built Ford Tough. Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. And the Nachos Party Pack from Taco Bell. 
Each Clemson championship was won as an underdog in the ultimate game. At about 600 miles from here in Clemson, the streets are packed for a watch party. That's a crowd. Seen their defense get Burrow and company off the field with a three and out. The loss of one yard. That drive began at the seven, Kirk. Now they're at the four. Joe Brady telling us this week, along with Steve Insminger, that it, you know they, they, they don't know what defenses are going to do when they play them because they've been so effective and so explosive. Now they've got the book on them. They see that 3-1-7. They're seeing different look, and now they have a feel, at least, for what Brent Venables wants to do against this offense. Now they make their adjustments. It's Thaddeus Moss, Randy's son, motioning to the right of the formation. Three receivers bunched there. And it's Edwards Hilaire who's hit in the backfield. Simmons is all over the place in the early going. But he's got eight guys up close to the line of scrimmage anticipating a run here. And they guess right. Nobody's there to pick up Isaiah Simmons who comes off the edge again. And you're right. He's active, Chris. Now Burrow from the end zone. First completion of the night. And he finds Chase, who's a couple yards short of the marker. Kendrick in coverage. Challenging Chase, challenging these receivers. That's their answer to try to slow them down. Not giving them much space at all to work with. Playing with tempo, they get it out quickly, but it's incomplete. Pressure got to Burrow. The throw was inaccurate to Jefferson, and the punt team comes out again. Well, this odd look with three down linemen really opens up the playbook for Brent Venables to bring pressure. It's making the offensive line guess where that pressure might come. That's why that opened up like that and freed Isaiah Simmons. Joe Burrow typically in command, setting the protections, understanding where the blitz pressure is. And after the first two series right now, he's kind of scratching his head, trying to figure out Venables' scheme. Two for five in the early going. A punt not very good by Von Rosenberg, but it gets a nice bounce. And Clemson will be backed up in their own end to start at about the 32-yard line. Burrow and the Bayou Bengals used to exploding early on offense. Hasn't happened scoreless midway first quarter. See marks the fifth anniversary of the college football playoff foundation's extra yard for teachers initiative celebration CFP executive director Bill Hancock and ESPN president Jimmy Pitaro presenting a six-figure check moments ago to students and teachers from New Orleans public schools and the Jefferson Parish schools and teachers around the dome asked to stand to be recognized third possession for Clemson they threatened in LSU territory each time but punted Set up this time with the 33. Not seen him run the ball from the quarterback spot yet. Play action, zips it across. Catch made by Braden Galloway. And the Tigers tight end off and rumbling. A flag comes in on the tackle down to the 10-yard line. And the man who was suspended for an entire season makes his first impact play in ages. Boy, he made a great play there but it, I think it's going to come part of it that will come back with it blocked by T Higgins a blindside block personal foul illegal blindside block offense number five 15 yard penalty still results in a first down move the ball back and they'll spot it about the LSU 40 yeah this is way downfield you see it almost about the 28 yard line where he'd already picked up big yards Gets in front of them, but still, because Queen had no idea he's a defenseless player, you can't make that block. It's one of the new rules in college football to protect these players. But a great call on first and ten to get those linebackers eyes in the backfield on ETN and on Trevor Lawrence, and they catch him napping by sneaking Galloway behind them. The game is 42 before the penalty. Pump fake. Lawrence still's got the football looking to run. Makes a cut and slides down at the 30. They'll mark him just short of the first down. I mean, when, when, he's, when he is decisive as a runner, I think that's the area that his game has changed the most from last year to this year. He's up to 220 pounds. He's running the ball. It makes those safeties have to really be aware of 16, not just as a passer, but the threat of him to pull it down and run the ball, as we saw last week against Ohio State, 16 carries, 107 yards. All of a sudden, you got to pay attention to the Clemson tight ends. Galloway in the slot to the right. 
Lawrence is looking over the middle, trying to buy time, and delivers a strike. And sliding down is Higgins, a flag down again in the offensive line pit area. Well, where the umpire threw that typically would be a holding call or a hands up in the face. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face. Defense number 62. After distance to the goal, first down. Siaki Ika, the freshman from Salt Lake City, and then will move the ball inside the 10. Yeah, he's up against the center, Pollard. Just to the right there, 62. He's trying to do everything he can with his hands. And see that right hand gets up, the follow through. Helmet almost comes off of Pollard. Umpire saw it, made the call. First and goal at the six. Not only the gain, but then the yards on top of that on the back end. Clemson has been lethal in the red zone this year. Touchdown 75% of the time. In a game like this, every possession down here, you don't want to ever settle for a field goal against Joe Burrow on that offense. They want to score touchdowns. Lawrence motions out. Direct snap to ETN. Who makes a cut? Accelerates. Reaches toward the goal line. Is just short. So a wrinkle. They're, they're, they're just coming out, unloading everything right now as, as play callers with Jeff Scott and Tony Elliott. I, it's it's interesting to see how quickly he puts his foot in the ground accelerates and then the power to almost extend to that goal line second down lawrence has still got it he's gonna stand up touchdown and the clemson tigers draw first blood in the superdome well, lsu loses their edge it's an area that they really challenged. Trevor Lawrence is making the right read and giving a good feel on his own read. Stay on that ride, make him commit to ETN, and then pull it out and get to the corner for the touchdown. BT Potter on for the conversion. Five play, 67 yards to reach the end zone, and LSU is behind for the first time in 25 quarters since late October. Lawrence as a runner again, just like against Ohio State. Want more stats? Hey Siri, who has the most passing touchdowns in college football? No, the answer is Joe Burrow, who's three away from Cole Brennan's single season FBS record of 58. It's been easy for Burrow. Eight touchdowns in the first nine possessions of the semifinal romp over Oklahoma. But just like last year's championship game, Clemson's defense has set the tone early. It was a pick six by A.J. Terrell last year. And they have stymied LSU, which gains about eight yards of play, Kirk. They got six yards in the first six plays. And they've also been backed up deep in their own uh, area. You know, they're inside their own five one time at a four-yard line, also at the sevens to Steve Insminger on the right, calls the plays. Joe Brady, who's been such a big splash as the passing game coordinator coming over from the New Orleans Saints, has brought more of a NFL scheme to this offense, and it's been dynamic. I mean, you're talking about an offense that scored 49 points a game to lead the country. They've gone through everybody in his first two possessions, they're kind of guessing right now against his 3-1-7 look with the seven defensive backs. Let's see what they do to counter what Venables has thrown at them early, Kurt. Clemson brings pressure on first down. They pick it up. The throw to Edwards Alaire, but not much after the catch. Tanner Muse forced them out. Well, we sat down with them. They, they talked about dime and whether it's five, six, seven defensive backs with what they call Penny. They said we want to give Joe full progression reads, meaning give him a chance to get the ball out of his hands quickly, find the matchup that we like best. Look for the slant, now delivers, and it's caught by Terrence Marshall. And LSU's first first down out across the 40. And, then, and that, that time he had enough time to eventually find that window. Nice delayed route there where Marshall is able to get underneath. Good protection, good timing that time. One of the first times we've seen LSU with that timing that, again, has been historical in the 2019 season. 15-yard gain off the play action. Burrow is pressured, steps up, cannot escape. 
He'll be sacked by Justin Foster, who has to step up tonight, Kirk, because Niles Pinckney can't go. That's right. He's on the edge. He wondered the edge tonight. Which Isaiah Simmons, they've been bringing him quite a bit when they feel that they can get home on passing situations. Here's a first and ten. And because Simmons forced him to step up, Foster eventually gets off of his man and gets to Burrow. Pinckney has an ankle, so guys like Darnell Jeffries, Foster will play a bigger role tonight. It is a deep defensive front, though. Second and 13. They show pressure. It's picked up. Burrow throws, but again, that's off target. And Burrow looks nothing like he did through the first 14 games so far, does he? Not at all. And, and as soon as he saw his running back, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, go all the way to the top of the screen, matched up against Isaiah Simmons, that's the matchup that he wants. But he, first of all, the receiver, the running back here, Edwards Hilaire, doesn't separate from Simmons with that route. And Joe looked very uncomfortable with that delivery. Usually the ball comes out quick, it comes out crisp, tight spiral, accurate. Not the case there. 0 for 2 on third. They need 13 yards here. Tight bunch formation. Play clock at 2. Just get it off. Burrow scrambling, scanning, fires downfield, in and out of the hands of Jamar Chase. Terrell in coverage, and they force another punt. Well, they're giving the, the again, the, the feel as if they're bringing pressure here with Skowski. They'll move the freshman around. He actually ends up getting there, Tyler Davis. But he's able to keep this play alive with his athletic ability. Great coverage downfield. They're covering for a long, long time. And that, again, the length of A.J. Terrell at 6'1", 190, able to stretch out and knock that ball away. Already the third punt for Von Rosenberg. He only had three punts combined in the wins over top five teams, Georgia and Oklahoma. This one will roll dead at the 25-yard line, but Lawrence and Clemson takes over up seven. Well, it's coming up Saturday, February 22nd, the biggest heavyweight fight in decades. Deontay Wilder, an Alabama guy, faces the lineal champion Tyson Fury, live from Las Vegas. Undefeated heavy hitter square off for the second time. That was a hard-hitting draw the first time. February 22nd, live on pay-per-view. Not what Coach O expected so far in this first quarter. His defense has been puzzled. His offense has been shut down. Play action. Lawrence steps up and launches deep. Higgins, and it is broken up. Flags come in. It was Delpit coming late. Fulton on the coverage against Higgins. Well, they're not hesitating when they get single high to try to get that ball Back to T. Higgins, one Pass on one. Interference. Defense number one. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. It's the third time that they've tried to go vertical to T. Higgins, who has great acceleration, pretty tight coverage, but he's got a step on him. They're going to take that shot. Delpit, who's got great closing speed, comes over, but an easy call there for the officials on the PI. They'll also take the penalty over the big gain. Moves the ball to the 40. ETN in traffic spins but cannot escape the tackle there of Fulton. Still a nice first down game. Good patience there. Giving his blockers a chance. JC Chalk, the tight end, pulling around along with the, the left guard, John Simpson. Expected Clemson to use tempo, and they have. There's a high throw over the head of Amari Rogers the first time that Trevor has misfired tonight. Yeah, that was a, a run pass option where he feels that slot receiver. And if he gets pressure from the man defending him, it was Jacoby Stevens three. He didn't get there, but just by coming into his face, he forced him to throw that ball up high. Clemson needs four. Four-man rush. Lawrence gets it out. Incomplete. Tried to find Ross on a slant. Derek Stingley Jr., the fine true freshman corner, was there. And the LSU Tigers defense gets a stop. 
how good of a matchup will that be with Ross against Stingley both both these receivers Ross or Higgins with their size going up against Stingley who's had a, just an incredible freshman year 6 190 pounds comes from Baton Rouge was the number one overall recruit targeted a lot but he is hard to complete passes against Spires has been great at knocking punts dead inside the 10 and pinning LSU back tries to do the same thing and that time didn't quite get the punt off and they weren't trying to take a delay a game delay a game offense five yard penalty still fourth down don't mix in a rugby punt you can see Spires was rolling to his right well they also took Isaiah Simmons who was lined up as a personal protector and then motioned out took a little bit of time and eventually that caught up to him brief conversation a moment ago between Sweeney and Spires the third year punter for Clemson nothing tricky it's a low boot Stingley on the run can he make a man miss he does make a couple of guys miss athletic return as he spins out near the 30 yard line well Taco Bell has brought the best of the regular season to the CFP Taco Bell live my student section providing free tickets to students from both schools giving the biggest game back to the biggest fans Boy, if I'm if I'm Joe Burrow and he says we bragged all year about his receivers as tight end Moss Elaire the running back how they have such great futures in the NFL but right now they're losing the one on one battles to that Clemson secondary and that's the first this year late pressure Burrow gets it out Moss makes the catch not much after the catch as Simmons was all over him that time he felt that blitz one of the first times he saw the blitz of Kayvon Wallace and Skowski coming from his right so he knew that he had a void they just didn't have the numbers there so at least he's able to get positive yards on first and ten Edwards Hilaire and he cannot escape the tackle of Skalski and he's got that tattoo in his left bicep that says war like the war you are and he is a warrior out there no doubt about it he's had a monster year they, they go with that condensed formation and that that gives Clemson a chance defensively to bring eight guys up close to that box area where Brent Venables has more bodies than they can block but they're still able to fight for that first down He's still trying to get that spark, get that momentum going, and create that, that avalanche that we've seen so often. Edwards Hilaire just lowers his shoulder. He delivered a blow to Terrell and Motors for a nice first down gain. Well, that, that can spark an offense, a run like that. We run through a, a defender and a would be tackler. The corner, Terrell, comes up. He's right there with a chance to, to make that play. But it gives you an idea of the low center of gravity, how physical of a back Clyde Edwards Hilaire can be. Low center of gravity, a nice way of saying he's very short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but very effective. Now Burrow gonna launch downfield for Chase, who's got it! Touchdown, LSU! It took a while, but the Bayou Bengals offense says join the party. Well, that's the answer from Joe Brady and Steve Insminger. Win the one-on-one -on -one battles outside the numbers. Jamar Chase has done that all year. What great ball skills and vision. Battling there with Terrell. Fighting, losing his balance and keeping his eyes on that football to come up with a touchdown. The sophomore who won the Bolitnikoff Award is the top receiver curve. Scores for a 13th time this season on a deep shot. That's by far the most. Yeah, and, and the thing is, They've got they've been doing a good job with Brent Venable scheme of putting up the, the pressure. These safeties have been cheating. This, you know, you get him here, you get this guy down. They're trying to take away a lot of the quick throws, a lot of the underneath things. And this time he just kind of sits there, but he's Turner's not able to get back and help Terrell out. So it's essentially Terrell on an island against Chase gets behind him. 
And there's the accuracy of Burrow for their first touchdown of the night. It was good on good in that matchup, and that one goes to the supremely confident sophomore from the supremely confident senior. What that can do is that can help. Now the threat of that is going to give Brent Venables pause on all this pressure. And now you can get back to trying to run your basic offense, the quick throws, the quick slants, and, and the run game, and eventually take another shot downfield if you get isolated one-on-one. -on -one. They were quiet and surprised by Clemson's fast start, but now it's seven apiece. Let's see what Lawrence can do. They will not have great field position this time after the touchback. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Some of the fog has lifted in New Orleans. That's good news. Goodyear recognizing those who strive to rise above the rest. Goodyear more driven. One of the great moments, Kirk, that have happened inside this dome. Seven Super Bowls, a whole bunch of championship games. In fact, the last four times LSU's played for a title right here in this building. You've seen the first three. Yeah, think about it. When I think of this, this building, I think of Michael Jordan, right? Making that last second shot as a freshman to win a national championship. Or Muhammad Ali, or yeah. Sugar Ray Leonard. So many great things. Hope we get some more memories tonight. That was messed up. The snap wasn't very accurate. Lawrence had to spin, hands it to ETN, and they swarm in. Jacoby Stevens and Michael Divinity got in there. Yeah, the timing was off from the beginning. The snap was okay to Lawrence, but the execution of the handoff slowed ETN down and allowed that defense to get into the backfield. It's just, it, it just right there. It's messed up, slowed down, penetration. Lawrence gets in there, and then the linebackers are able to clean that up. LSU fans certainly sensing a momentum shift. You got Clemson behind the sticks, second and 14. Empty backfield, ETN. Rolled out, but Lawrence took a peek and then moves forward. Gets positive yards. It'll set up third and six. Sixty-seven yard touchdown run against Ohio State is a play we'll never forget. Ninth rushing touchdown of the season for Lawrence earlier in the quarter, which has just a minute 13 remaining now. Neither side has converted on third down yet. Some confusion on the LSU side as they try to get lined up. Lawrence under pressure, chased, flips it downfield, and has Galloway the tight end for a first down across the 45, his second catch. Chris, you picked up on it, the confusion of that LSU secondary, and then they're in the fact that they were not able to get to Lawrence. There's his athletic ability, keeping the play alive, throws back against his body, but nobody there to pick up Galloway. 18-yard gain on third and six. And now darting forward is ETN. Galloway, a guy who had a positive PED test and missed an entire year. Imagine sitting that out. A serious mistake that he maintains was an innocent one. First game since October of 2018. Played last game against the Buckeyes, but didn't do very much at all, and already making an impact in the national championship in his first quarter. It's Jacoby Stevens, the junior safety for LSU that's down on the field. We've seen a team in Clemson that had a quiet assurance, and that comes right from their quarterback and their coaching staff. They know what they're capable of in a championship stage, and they've come out very sharp in the early going. Yeah, they really have. I mean, the matchup really for the last two weeks was how will Joe Burrow's offense match up against this Clemson defense because Clemson has had a great history and tradition of being creative and, and confusing quarterbacks, confusing offensive linemen and pass protection. And uh, I think that will continue to be the game within the game to eventually find out who wins his football game. Stevens helped off. Gary Vincent Jr. is a quality safety. Comes in in his position. Second and four. Final 20 seconds of the quarter. Lawrence again running and weaving his way showing his quick feet and his strength it's a first down uh, and, and that's a that's a quarterback draw he's trying to maneuver his way and find a crease which was tough to do but again he's got great change of direction for a guy his size at 6'6 to be able to find a way to get that first down incredible
But Clemson has controlled the clock and the field position. They struck first. The lightning strike to Jamar Chase ties the game at seven. End of one here in New Orleans. Let's go to Kenny Main. Seven apiece start in the second quarter. College football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. Clemson trying to add to its impressive trophy case, trying to go back-to-back 15-0 seasons and win that CFP trophy. Not supposed to be able to do that in the playoff era. Remarkable. Trying to win it for the third time in four years. It'd be each time against a 14-0 heavyweight from the Southeastern Conference. Again, the second quarter. On the move with the LSU 42. Then Jay Dixon spelling ETN in the backfield. He fake it to Roger. I pop it to Rogers. It was a pop pass. <laughs> Cleverly done. He gets some speed, gets the corner for about six. They're going to continue to challenge those edges of the LSU defense. If they're, they're going to try to get pressure, think about just the pass rush. That's a good way to keep them on is to make them have to respect that aspect, whether you run ETN or you use a jet sweep, in that case, without Rodgers. Second and five. Lawrence has got it, rolls out, delivers a long throw over the head of Justin Ross. You see the arm strength, but it wasn't accurate. Yeah, it gives him that zone read feel and look for the defense, trying to bait them up, trying to get those linebackers and defensive backs to come up and try to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup he can win. And because Stingley was in great position, he tried to go back shoulder to get the ball to Ross where he can maybe have a chance, but obviously the ball sails on him. Good coverage there by the Tigers, by the LSU Tigers. you got to clarify today. <laughs> I know. Third and five. Rogers motioning across. Dixon is the back, and Lawrence is pressured. Flips the ball to Dixon at the last minute. Dangerous play, but it worked out. Caught, but three yards short of the marker at the 35. Caleb on chase on has had a great last two or three games. Relentless effort. He actually went to the ground, got back up, and still got this pass rush. On, on Lawrence before he's able to get it out just before his knee touches and get it out to Dixon. But boy, Chase on is right now a factor coming off the offense's left side against Carmen. Field goal team is on the field. BT Potter to try this from 52, which would be a career long. He's hit from 51 twice. LSU's field goal team ran on very late. The kick is away, and it is good from distance. As the sophomore delivers a new career long, a nine play, 40 yard drive, and it comes in back on top. He drove it low and had just enough. Hasn't been a great season for the young kicker, but he delivers on a big stage. 10 7, Tigers in orange. President and First Lady also attended LSU's victory at Alabama this year. And Congressman Steve Scalise on the right there looks ready for Mardi Gras. He does. Got the beads going. The de facto home team, though, once again behind. E.T. Potter now three for three on field goals beyond 50 yards this season. And a nice smile from Dabo Sweeney afterward. He eschewed the long field goal try early. But Potter delivers there. And now kicks off, and it'll be another touchback. Time from plan to play. Brought to you by Northwestern Mutual, Kirk. Well, they went back to the drawing board, and they said, you know, let's get the ball out of Joe Burrow's hands quickly. Now, that, that was one of their answers, trying to find matchups, trying to find space, trying to get their athletes in space. Then they created a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Burrow knows he's going to chase all along. Keeps the safety in position, works his way from the left all the way to the right. Come up with a 70-yard drive and that touchdown. They had 38 yards on 14 plays before that touchdown. They had 10 pass attempts. It netted 32 yards until the 52-yarder to chase. Got to hurry. Here comes pressure. Burrow scans and takes off. And he's in the clear and now slides down. 
He is a dangerous runner. Really hurt Georgia in the SEC championship game. Watch the middle of this defense. Watch how it clears out. And watch Joe Burrow feel Isaiah Simmons take Moss. Once he gets his eyes on Moss, you've got to have somebody there to account for the speed and the decisive process, the thought process of Joe Burrow. He's now run for 37 first downs this season. That is a big number. And he gets upfield so quickly when he makes his mind up to run the ball. Much quicker than he might appear on TV. When you watch him field level and defenses have to adjust, they are usually surprised. On the slant in traffic, it's Marshall, and they get about six. And that's LSU this year. You're going to bring pressure with Isaiah Simmons. They're going to get the ball out fast and find one of those quick slants underneath, whether it's to two, who's had a quiet night, Justin Jefferson, or the Terrace Marshall, who comes up with that big uh, that uh, catch there on first and ten. Clemson again in that three down lineman look. One linebacker, seven DBs, and Burrow has to force the ball into coverage there. Simmons is all over Thaddeus Moss. They're keen on taking away the tight end tonight. They, they know that they have to, and they want to put Isaiah Simmons on the tight end because of the size and the natural matchup there. Does a good job working around with his arm. Body doesn't affect Moss for the PI, but he has, again, that great length to be able to get around him and knock it away. Buckus award winner made it a long time to make an impact play against Ohio State. Finally had the pick. Third and four. Burrow pressured. Chased by Skulski. And has to just throw it away. So again, the linebacker blows the play up. It's fourth down. They're trying to get the ball out to Clyde Edwards. He lair on a, on a rub. But the pressure up the middle again. They're able to get home clean. Nobody's there. You go empty. You know you're going to get pressure, but because of the, the coverage downfield by the safety, Nolan Turner, there's nowhere to go. Even though LSU knew that was coming, they can't get separation on third down. Nowhere to go for Burrow to throw that ball. Look about a quarterback. It's on the FBS record pace, almost 78% completions. Just 7 of 14 so far. And this time it's the LSU punt team's job to knock the ball dead deep. Racy McGrath, or McMath I should say, is their top special teams gunner. He downs the ball at the four yard line. The college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T is brought to you by Gatorade. For the athletes who give everything, nothing beats Gatorade. And Samsung QLED TV, bringing 4K to tonight's megacast for the first time ever. Unless you're winning championships on home soil, a familiar theme. Bill Beckham Jr., the Honey Badger, lots of legends on both sides here. LSU once beat Clemson in a Sugar Bowl in a perfect season. A seven zip thriller, Kirk. <laughs> That's right. Patrick Again, Peterson. Half back pass. Coming up at halftime. CFB 150 celebrate by the 11 greatest players in the history of the sport will be saluted. That'll be a lot of fun. Well, we saw LSU in that first quarter penned inside their own 10 a couple of times. Unable to be very effective, get any traction. Let's see how Trevor Lawrence handles it. Kobe Stevens, the safety, is back in the game. Lawrence on play action from the end zone. Fires a long throw. Ross makes the catch. He'll be wrestled down to the 28 by Fulton, but a first down. Well, just a great route by Justin Ross. They're, they're going after Fulton. Inside move to the post, comes to the outside. Fulton never had a chance. Great eyes, great patience that time by Ross. Really sold that inside move to make Fulton bite on it before he cut back outside. He's been tough to beat this year. He's got a first round NFL draft grade, does Fulton. 24 yard gain. And a handoff to Etienne, who bounces it. And scoots and still going. Etienne tight roping into LSU territory. Delpit finally forced him out. You know, as good as Chason is as a pass rusher, he loses the edge, and his eyes are looking towards the quarterback, Lawrence. He's looking for a pass because Lawrence fakes the throw, and Etienne went right by him. Got 29. He's got it again. 
ETM would love to match the feet of his little brother Trevor, who scored a touchdown in this building. They lost the 3A state championship game, but Travis has never scored a touchdown in the dome. Well, he, he's on his way, it looks like, to having a big night. They, they are having a hard time setting that edge, and just like that, Clemson inside their own five, and now plus territory to 36 of LSU. Big chunks of yardage. Linday Dixon on a reverse. It's Higgins. Lawrence throws a block. Higgins is off and running. Breaking tackles, banging off people. Touchdown. Clemson stretches the lead. Wow. Six yards the trickery now you get an aggressive defense you counter that with the reverse look at Carmen leading the way look at Justin Ross eight with an outstanding block on the freshman Stingley and then T Higgins showing some toughness lowers his shoulder and goes over the other corner Fulton to get work his way into the end zone some physicality from the long lanky wide receiver at 6'4 215 TNT pylon cam shows you the touchdown. He kept his feet inbounds. And, hey, you know, Kurt Clemson backed up. They don't care. Gets to Ohio State. 94 and 99 yard touchdown drives. This one, 96 yards in four plays. Looks like that game winning drive was right. out in the desert. Shows the confidence they have in their quarterback with their play calling when they get pinned back like that. Already 263 total yards. LSU just 117, about half that on the one big play. Yeah, you, again, LSU is trying to, they've had a hard time being able to set, stop the edge. And so they're going to fly. Watch this defense fly to stop the potential run out of position. Carmen showing some athletic ability, but that block by Justin Ross is just outstanding. And love to see T. Higgins lower his shoulder. Trevor Lawrence kind of helped set that edge. Kind of a, does his job, just stands in the way of the big defensive lineman. Well, Kirk, we wonder what would happen if this front-running LSU team, this offense that's been unstoppable, meets their match against a talented defense and falls behind. Dabo Sweeney's team is up by 10, and we're about to find out right now. I wish he'd start having some fun down there as a coach. Well, for those in orange, that was a fun play. <laughs> Trickery, a bunch of guys doing their jobs, and Higgins finishing it with a physical move inside the five-yard line. And right away, you saw Dabo go down and work the defense, trying to get them to respond to that drive and touchdown, put, the, put Clemson up. LSU has not been behind by double digits all season long. Another reminder, Saturday night, UFC 246 in Vegas. Conor McGregor, long-awaited return to the act again against the Cowboy. Donald Cerrone holds the UFC record for most wins. Prelims at 8 on ESPN, main event at 10 Eastern. Go to ESPN plus.com slash PPV. See Dabba congratulating Justin Ross, not T. Higgins, just for the block. Burrow on the slant. Chase has got it. And first down out across the 40. How do you defend slants like that well, consistently you all night? You can't because what he's looking at is the linebackers coming up to stop the run. So it gives him a passing lane on the run pass option. Usually, you don't see a quarterback work to the back side. You've got to have inside leverage to take away those quick throws. That's just great execution, though. It's tough to stop. Justin Jefferson, we're used to seeing him catch those slants. Just one catch so far for negative one yard. Clemson brings the pressure. It's picked up, and now Burrow is launching downfield. And it's Chase again who's got the catch. And again, fighting inside the five. Terrell was beaten again. He did save the touchdown. So if you're going to pressure Joe Burrow, it's just going to come down to do you get to him or not. Because if you're going to leave Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson one-on-one, -on -one, they're going to continue to go downfield because of the confidence that they have that they will win that one-on-one -on -one matchup. 
Edwards Hilaire on first and goal is stopped by Nolan Turner, the safety who invaded the backfield. So plays of 52 and 56 yards already to chase. That, that's their and that's one, another one of their answers to this pressure is hey, if we get one on one, let's get downfield and make a throw. Boy, Dabo Sweeney, a full sprint. That was like a 40 yard sprint to try it, it, to get that time out. The headset went flying. He saw something he didn't like down there as LSU went empty. <laughs> Dabo's still a guy you, you wonder about pulling a hamstring, but he does sprint out. He, he gets good and warmed up. He does. He sprints onto the field full sprint. Maybe it's for those kind of opportunities. That was good 30 yards. Well, they were celebrating seconds ago, but you can see why even though LSU is not used to being behind, no lead is safe. They dangerously have moved inside the five yard line. You know what's great about this game is the confidence that both coaches have in their quarterback and that they feel that we're going to continue to fight. We're going to continue to be aggressive. We're not going to get conservative. We're not going to think, oh, boy, they, they, they've got us off track. Let, let's let's pull back a bit. No, 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 no. Keep going full steam ahead. Keep believing in Joe Burrow. Keep believing in Trevor Lawrence and make this defense, even with this system that's gotten us a bit off track, make them have to respond to us. This is great versus great. LSU is so tough to stop with their pass game inside the 10, but Clemson's been the ultimate red zone defense this year. It's what won him the game against Ohio State. Edwards Hilaire goes in motion. Burrow is flushed and chased and has to throw it away. Once again, it was Skalski trying to run the quarterback down. They're having a lot of success bringing these blitzes up the middle. Skalski's going to split. Right up the middle between the guard and the tackle. Nobody there. You can see a late reaction. Just being confused. You're moving your protection one way, and they bring more pressure the other. It's a pre-snap to post-snap look that is affecting the offensive line and the pass protection. Their great use of the timeout at this point as they slow down LSU's momentum. And now it's third and goal. Now they're really spreading them out, trying to create space and see who can win a one-on-one -on -one battle. One of those crucial plays early, and Adamo Sweeney says, games like this, it's just four or five plays that are going to decide the outcome, but you never know when they're going to happen. They happened in the second quarter of the semifinal. LSU takes a timeout before the third and goal. Joe Burrow told us he thought it would be, quote, a fun chess match tonight against Venables in that Clemson defense. Hasn't been as much fun as he thought, Kirk, but now after each side has taken a timeout, third and goal from the four. And, and now you're Joe Brady upstairs with Steve Insminger. You're, you're trying to find the matchup. Are you going to Jamar Chase, who's up against Terrell? Are you trying to get it to Justin Jefferson, who's in his slot against Kayvon Wallace? Thaddeus Moss is out there. You've got a lot of different options. Edwards Hilaire far to the left. Tigers have yet to convert on third down tonight. One of those big four-point plays. Burrow looking to run. Escapes and scores. Well, they got the Fab Five playmakers, but you got to keep an eye on the quarterback, too. And they called the right thing. They expected an empty, the potential of him to run. He's done that a lot this year out of empty, especially down inside that five-yard line. They brought the blitz, Isaiah Simmons and Skowski, but it's picked up by LSU's offensive line, and it opened up there for an easy touchdown for Burrow. We said chess match. That was that one goes to Brady and Burrow. Cade York, freshman kicker, who has missed four PATs on the season, even though he converts long field goals, cuts the lead to three again. Now here's here's the touch or the nice long run by Chase. He gets to the outside from that slot position. They've been moving him around a bit on that right side. Again, it's, that's the matchup. Terrell against Chase, he wins again, almost gets it into the end zone, but we get all the way down to a third down and goal, spread him all over the field. There's the blitz, Isaiah Simmons came up, but he's picked up nicely by Ed Ingram, the, the left guard who's in right now. And he sets that, that block and makes it easy for Burrow to get to that end zone for the touchdown. So each of these prolific passing quarterbacks who are also dual threat guys have a rushing touchdown tonight. Burrow is a perfectionist, almost never satisfied no matter how monster a night that he has. Always feels like he can do more or better. Never enough. Just wants to keep raising the bar. 
He's being challenged tonight. He knows it. He knew that coming in that there was a good chance for this scheme from Clemson to, to give his offense fits, but they're adjusting well and they put themselves within three points. 75 yard drive and Travis Etienne it comes from Jennings when he made his announcement and recruiting day. Give a jab at LSU fans who remember. Because both schools called Death Valley home, but Travis weighed in on that. I just the hat. Where are you going for the next four years? Uh, I'll be taking my talents to the real Death Valley. The real Death Valley. Mm, those are fighting words, and the ugly side of social media, he did get some threats. Once this matchup was set, LSU fans began to harass his family. Travis still smiling through that and enjoying his experience. A lot of media attention for him this week. He's got the football. He's trying to bounce it, and he's going to run smack into a tackler there. Knocked down by Phillips. Maria? So, Chris, you mentioned that hometown of Jennings, Louisiana, and that town had Clemson Day on Friday, despite the fact that they're right in the middle of LSU country. T-shirts were made to support Travis Etienne called Tigers Divided, and ultimately he's been called a ray of light in that city. But Travis said he's gone into a submarine, guys, leading into this game, blocking everything out, including mom, so he could be focused. You can't hear the static in a submarine, can you? Travis over 4,000 career rushing tonight and 5,000 all-purpose. And he's got it again. Kind of a sprint out handoff. He shows the strength, loses the helmet, and draws a flag at the end of the run. It'll move the ball near midfield. Yeah, I think seven, Grant Delpit trying to make a tackle. Got his hand in there on the face mask and ripped the helmet off of ETN, who we're just talking about. Personal what? foul. Face mask. Defense number seven. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Delpit, who's struggled at times with injuries this year, won the, the Thorpe Award. He's had a tough night so far. Kirk. He has, and, and even without the penalty, it, look at the physicality. I mean, it, this kid runs hard, leads the nation in yards after contact per carry, and then you get the face mask on the back end of that. They add more 15 yards. Have the back of the helmet and ripped it off. Unless you crowd not in love with the call. Empty backfield, Lynn J. Dixon to the right. And Lawrence is looking to the left. And now flips it over the middle, over the head of Rodgers, who takes a huge shot there from Stevens and is slow to get up. He took a shot right in the back. Stevens, who's sitting back there playing his deep safety spot. You know, it. That's just a, a big hit right there in the backside of, of Omari Rogers. Ball just sailed on Trevor Lawrence. He had him open. Hit him with his shoulder. You can see the whiplash effect on Rogers. Bill Lamagne is our rules expert in the booth. In his opinion, that's an okay, clean hit. The hit was fine. The timing was fine. He did not go in uh, with the, to the head neck area. Didn't use the crown of his helmet. It's a clean hit. Stevens is a guy that's no stranger to penalties. He's the most penalized guy on LSU's defense, but that's kind of a dream play for a safety. Oh, yeah. See a receiver laid out, and you get a chance to yep. hammer him. Especially if you, may, if you hit him clean. Mario up and running off the field. Stevens, when you talked to Dave Aranda, the defensive coordinator from LSU, he said, you know, he, he really helped set the tone emotionally for this defense. Veteran who bounces around and, and plays a lot of different positions. And this has been a fun one, hadn't it? Clemson's been very sharp. Defense controlled LSU early, but a couple of touchdowns. And now Lawrence and the Tigers right back to work in LSU territory. Dabo Sweeney way it out of field. Has to be ushered back to the sidelines. And I don't know if ETN is going to motion back into the backfield, but they have him lined up. Lawrence fires to ETN in heavy traffic. And we'll see you all over that. Caleb on chase on mostly a pass rusher, but dropped into coverage that time. Yeah, I think the entire defense when they saw nine out wide and it's an unusual look and it, it was an indicator that that ball is going to come out. Good chance it's going to go to ETN. Did a good job of leveraging the football forcing it back inside. It's for Dave Aranda. We talk so much about Venables. Aranda can really crank up the pressure himself and has a great pass rusher in Chase on who's right there. Third and nine. Break off the edge, but Lawrence rolls away from the pressure, delivers an inaccurate throw to Higgins, and it's fourth down. 
pressure. Divinity's back in the lineup. He gets off quick. No call as far as being a little early. He just had great quickness. He's got the time to make that throw, and I think he felt maybe a little bit hurried because in the blind side, he felt that that, that blitz was coming. Maybe hurried it a bit, but didn't have much of a chance at all for Lawrence. Divinity, a guy who missed nine games. Media reports of a fourth positive test for marijuana. He is so eager to make a play here in his hometown. He said all that pent-up anger from all those missed games was going to come out tonight, he hoped. After the punt, LSU once again with poor field position, down by three. Hope for some mayhem to cap the season. Curtis Wilson on the All-State bus is here in New Orleans. What have you selected as tonight's mayhem moment? Well, you go back and look at that semifinal game where Ohio State was up 16. And, and I think the fact that Lawrence gets knocked out of the game and then comes back in the way he came back to be able to lead Clemson to that win. 16 carries, 107 yards. I think that was definitely a mayhem moment. Showed a different side of his athletic ability that night and toughness as well. LSU from the 13. Once again, Clemson crowding the line. Burrow trying to figure out where the pressure is coming from. It's picked up, and he fires across the middle. It was over the head of Jefferson. They struggled to involve the star receiver so far tonight. Yeah, they're, they're, they typically, with Jefferson, like to work the bender over the cross the middle. Bring a lot of receivers typically in front of that coverage. This time they didn't, but he's still able to get it over the outstretched arm of Tanner Muse, who in this 3-1-7 is almost playing a linebacker a lot of times tonight. They have him up closer to the line of scrimmage. Jefferson, the guy that has 102 catches this year, has not made an impact yet so far. Burrow pressured immediately, flushed, takes off. Chased by Simmons, but he angles for a first down. And there you see the dispect speed of the quarterback. Absolutely. And not only the speed, but the recognition. Where's Isaiah Simmons? Where is he? Where is he? He clears out. He's worried about those underneath throws, those quick slants. So you can't cover the quick slant and also account for the quarterback. So if you stay there with Burrow, he'll make the throw. If you take the pass away, he's going to run it. Burrow surveys and fires. And it's Chase again getting free, dragged down to the 45. Jefferson, I should say, finally makes an impact play. That's more like what you expect to see. Watch this open up. They take Marshall six underneath, opens up a beautiful throwing lane. That's what LSU's offense has been, the timing and the rhythm this season. Can't hold Jefferson down forever. Now Edward Solaire out of the backfield. Spins free of a tackle. Makes two more men miss and gets down inside the 35. Well, that, that, let's take a look at that. I, I thought he stepped out of bounds. What an incredible effort, though, by the talented back who's been doing that much of this season out of the backfield. Such a tough matchup. He's in bounds. Oh, did his hand maybe touch out of bounds? Nope. They run the play, and now it's Jefferson out of the flat. Stop and go, lowers the shoulder, hammers down inside the 15, and the Tigers' offense is rolling now. Yeah, they sure are. They're getting the ball out quickly. Joe Brady and Steve Insminger, their adjustment is to be attacking, getting the ball out quickly, and getting their, their receivers to win these one-on-one -on -one battles. And now the crowd boos because Timeout Clemson player Tyler the Davis, the big almost 300-pound defensive tackle, is dropped to the field. Complaining of an apparent cramp. Well, they, they were going so fast. You know, I, that big play by Clyde Edwards, he layer out of the backfield. This is where they slipped Jordan Je uh, Jefferson. Justin Jefferson out, brought him from the left to the right. Nobody picks him up, and he is dynamic. Edwards Alaire. Maybe the premier all-purpose back in the country. 50 catches coming in. And this is the play. Look, you see his hand touches. His feet stayed in, but the hand touched down. But they were going so fast, it didn't get uh, the replay booth enough time to be able to beep down and, and take another look at that. Gary McNanus, the replay official, 
from the Pac-12 here. Davis continues to get stretched out. Again, Niles Pinckney, the starting defensive tackle. The grad student who's played in four playoff games was in tears on the bench before the game. He has one more year left. He could come back, but be a tough way to end the career if you're Pinckney. And now Davis has to walk off. There's, we'll see if that was, there's Pinckney there, but you feel for him. Ankle injury is the issue. We'll see if uh, Davis's injury is broken the momentum here of LSU. Rich. LSU fans suspect was the motive all along. First down inside of six minutes to play. Ruth Aroraro, the true freshman from Lagos, Nigeria, originally with a fun name to say, filling in for Davis. Plenty of time for this pre snap chess match. And Burrow not the only one looking over. Receivers look over. Edwards Hilaire looks over everybody on the same page Burrow from the pocket launches to the end zone caught touchdown chase And LSU takes its first lead tonight Man can he drop a dime I, I had a chance to sit down with Joe Burrow this week in Baton Rouge about this matchup And I asked him about boy you throw a lot of balls that the receivers look covered, but you throw it and you, you score touchdowns. And he said, those defensive backs are not looking, they're open. I don't care if they're in phase or stride for stride with my receivers, I'm gonna throw the ball. It's exactly what he does, he does here with Jamar Chase. He trusts his receiver to make the play. Matched up against Terrell, it's, it's good against good right here. Watch him hesitate and then work towards the fade. The timing of this. Wait, 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 almost as if he's going to block. Pretty decent coverage till the end, but Burrow knows. See, shows, kind of flashes that he's going to block. Terrell didn't bite on it. Stays in pretty good coverage. But this is that timing between Joe Burrow and these wide receivers we've seen all year. Chase has caught his 19th and 20th touchdown receptions tonight. Took it 87 yards in six plays, barely two minutes, aided by the fact that Edward Zillaire touched his hand out of bounds, but they didn't buzz down in and time. That's right. How about Chase tonight? As he said, five catches, 147 yards, two touchdowns. He was confident, and he's backing it up. Sure is. We're not even to halftime. He's got 147 yards, and he's been going up against the best corner from Clemson and A.J. Terrell and winning that matchup. His teammate Jefferson set the CFP single game record against Oklahoma with 227 receiving yards on 14 catches. Chase could chase that record down tonight if this keeps up. Now this season for every field goal and extra point made by the two schools, Allstate makes a contribution to the general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Tonight, Kirk, Trevor Lawrence, and Clemson takes over behind for the first time tonight. And the noise is back at the dome. These folks have spent the entire game on their feet. Wide snap, corralled by Lawrence, who fires, and a hands catch made beautifully by T. Higgins, those long arms. Wow. In front of Fulton. That was impressive. You know, T. Higgins had a rough night against Ohio State. Really, all the Clemson wide receivers had a rough night, and it's all hands. Nice catch there by T. Higgins, even as he comes down to the ground. They were challenged all year. They're going to take a peek at this. Take a peek, I guess, when he came to the surface. They're going to see if there was the ball moved when he came down with it. I mentioned Higgins knocked out in the first quarter. It was a concern over a concussion. They examined him at halftime, and he came back in the third quarter against Ohio State, made four catches. Ooh, what is the first part to touch down there? Looks like that foot was yeah, on the white. I see the left, the, the left foot, if it gets down. I, yeah, boy, I thought it, the left foot never got down. He looked like he I, I was thought the be left, able to get yeah, it I down. thought the left yeah. foot would get down right there, and it never quite touched. You have to no, credit I, Fulton, though. His physical play yeah, forced the receiver out. Sure did. I just assumed the left foot came down, especially when we're watching it live. 
How about that toe? It somehow never touches the ground. Clemson fans are saying, wait a second, now you buzz down quickly for a replay review? <laughs> right. Yeah, they're going to bring this one back. Take away. Gain out to the 36, a 16 or 11 yard gain. It'll be second and 10. Yeah. Aaron McNana has the final say, but there are two folks in the command center for the Pac-12 back in the Bay Area also weighing in on these replay reviews tonight. LSU fans are convinced that that replay is definitive. Clemson receivers admitted, admitting to us at the Ohio State corners, Damon Arnett and Jeffrey Akuda both did a good job of jamming them at the line of scrimmage. They didn't have a great game, and they, they've been challenged these last couple weeks to try to step up in this game. Well, they've already spotted the ball back at the 25 yard line. We haven't got an official verdict from Chris Coit, but uh, here's a clue. It's a second down and 10 play. They're looking at two things. Did he maintain possession and did he get a foot which, down? Which foot touchdown first? Yeah. Yeah, it seems like everybody's dialed in on what's going on. Even the Clemson offense is already kind of moving forward as if it's second and 10. They, they see where the ball has been placed. After review, the pass is incomplete. The receiver didn't maintain control going to the ground. It will be second down. Please reset the game clock to five minutes, 14 seconds, 514. We also don't think he got a foot inbounds. Thank you. Kirk, we talked about this battle on both sides between the talented receivers and the talented defensive backs. It's been interesting to watch so far. It really has. Like I said, I mean, they've been challenged to try to step up. LSU plays a lot of man-to-man, -man, very similar to the way Ohio State challenged them and, and had success, and they were determined to be able to get off a press and, and win. Shovel pass inside to Etienne, who navigates through traffic. Can't quite bust that tackle for a bigger gain. Stingley got him to the ground along with Delpit, but it's a first down. And Trevor Lawrence, nice patience, drawing Jacoby Stevens to him to be able to then flip it underneath to get ETN the ball and then have a chance to follow the, the guard, John Simpson, around. He kind of hid behind him and then accelerated for that first down. Things happen fast when number nine has the football in his hands. He fake it to him. Lawrence wanted a downfield shot, takes a hit, and launches an overthrow. That time Fulton was in coverage right there. No chance for Ross to make a play, and Rashard Lawrence hit the quarterback. Yeah, yeah, Lawrence got in. He got off of the block of Simpson, and, and I really think that Lawrence feels that, and that's what forced him to get rid of that ball, not be able to really follow through, and it affect the, it affected the accuracy of that throw. Lawrence hit on Lawrence, and now... There's a man down deep in the LSU secondary, and it is Delpit who's down on one knee. You talk about the intensity of this game. Emotions can also have a physical effect. We see players cramp up. Man, this has been a very high energy back and forth first half. Everything you kind of would hope for. I mean, it, it, there's some challenging aspects of it early. Answers by by LSU is the brain trust kind of figured out with Venables and how he's attacking and how to create some one-on-one -on -one matchups for Jamar Chase. How about Clemson? They got backed up inside their own five. They responded, put a touchdown. It's kind of the game that we had hoped to see. You hope it lasts like this all the way for four quarters where it's so competitive. We wondered how would LSU respond down by double digits for the first time this season. They responded with a couple of touchdowns and the offense on solid footing. Nothing's easy for Burrow tonight so far. No, but he's uh, responded. Chase has been the big weapon. Sure has. And you wonder what Brent Venables will do as an answer. To, is he going to bracket Jamar Chase, which would then open it up for Jefferson or it could open up for other. That's what makes LSU so good on offense is if you try to take one guy away, they're going to find the other potential matchup. That's a, a mismatch or an advantage to them. They're replacing the Thorpe Award winner is a true freshman Mo Hampton from Memphis number 14 in its safety. Playing deep center field. Second and ten. Delayed handoff and ETN going nowhere. Glenn Logan, the big defensive end, grabbed him for a loss. What a great play by Glenn Logan right here. Works around the right guard, Cervinka. Look at that look, swim move, great hands. Keep in mind the size, 315-pound junior. 
most consistent, the leader, really one of the great leaders of that defensive line. Not known for quickness in the interior of that defense, but there, Logan really showed it. They take the big bodies out, the 360 pounder Shelvin goes to the sidelines. You got just one true defensive lineman in there, along with the pass rusher, Chase on. On third down, Lawrence rolls away from pressure, and it's incomplete. A high throw intended for Higgins, very well defended by Vincent Jr. And that, that was a high throw, but a, a catchable ball that Higgins can make. I mean, it, this is a long throw, good coverage, size advantage with Higgins. That's why they put. That's why Lawrence put it up high, where the 6'4 T Higgins can go up and over Vincent, who's 5'10, but tight coverage. Now let's see with that tackle for loss in that possession. Messing up the Clemson drive and now 349 before halftime unless he's going to get the football back with a four-point lead It's a deep deep punt by Spires Zingley just lets it bounce and that punt team has been busy and effective for the Tigers tonight Once again LSU backed up inside the five well, We've been marveling at Jamar Chase all year the Belitnikov winner the timing the execution with Joe Burrow Slow start for this offense, but an adjustment is to get him isolated the way it has been all year. And it's been against Terrell. H.H. Terrell, the top corner, number eight. He's got great length, great athletic ability. But the last few series, unable to stay up with number one from LSU. See if Brent Venables will make adjustments to try to slow him down by trying to get a safety over top to help out. Tremendous punt, Kirk, by Spires, 58 yards. And LSU for the third time begins inside its own 10. Edwards Hilaire has got the football, evades a tackle, off and running, barreling out toward the 30. Man, is he fun to watch. He sure is. And you better have your head up and a chance. You better have your head up and, and you better wrap up. Look at this move right there on AJ Terrell, the corner who's trying to set that edge. Look at the suddenness, the quickness, the lateral quickness, the jump cut there by, by Edwards Hilaire. He gets upfield and picks up. Positive yards there on first and ten. Burrow against a four-man rush is still pressured. Can he escape? He bobbled the ball, recovered it, but it's a big loss of nine. Tyler Davis, the freshman, got in there. There's a miscommunication there with Joe Burrow and his receivers. So often in this system, you, you need to read the same coverage. You need to see exactly the same thing. And, and that time, Burrow wanted to go deep to his right. But Clyde Edwards Hilaire who had motion who lined up out there was matched up and he did not run the deep the deep route Bro was surprised had just ate it So surprised he bobbled the ball Yeah. Second sack for Clemson on second and 19 Burrow against a twisting pass rush inaccurate throw for Marshall third and a mile but Sometimes you don't even have to bring pressure. You don't have to blitz Skowski. You don't have to bring Backers or safeties you just use that twist to be able to try to affect the eyes and try to affect that offensive lines communication Now because of that sack on first and ten look at this third and 19 Good luck against the Venables defense Yeah, do they bring pressure and where is it going to come from Skowski's had a lot of success on third downs getting home Here he is on the left edge number 47 Oh, there were 11 Clemson Tiger defenders out, close to the line on third and 19, so they call a timeout. Seconds. Chess match. And then eight guy, eight guys within the box, all capable of blitzing. And you're 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 looking at Joe Burrow, and he's looking at that defense, and he's trying to set that protection. And it's a little bit of a guessing game on trying to figure out where that pressure might come from. And then again, they could show it and then just bail and get out of it. And Nick Saban said in the pregame. He thought the key which defense could affect the opposing quarterback the most both defenses have been successful Nick will join Reese and Desmond the Mercedes-Benz halftime report just 229 away That was the key for everybody really coming in is what can you do to slow down? You're looking at a quarterback and Joe Burrow who's more than likely gonna be the first pick overall this year and Trevor Lawrence who's gonna be the first pick next year Somebody better slow these guys down, right? Saban, of course, who won a championship in this building for LSU and against LSU and Alabama. Joe went over, put the headset on, probably talked to Joe Brady to get a feel here on third down. We'll see that often in a timeout, too. No. 
It's only a three-man rush. And Burrow launches downfield, and Marshall has interfered. And that's going to give LSU a first down. Darian Kendrick was beaten and got there very early. Remember we talked about how they're going to show potentially pressure, and then they could come out of it? Simmons, Muse, they look like they're showing Defense, it, and then they get one. out of it at the, the end. They penalty. rush three Automatic and just down. drop eight. He's got eight guys in coverage. Burrow still challenges them with a ball that's underthrown, and that's really what forced Kendrick to run into, into Marshall. Man, Kirk, there are a few things that sting a defense more than a pass interference penalty on third and 19. On an underthrown ball with eight in coverage. So the automatic first down moves the ball to the 36. LSU with one timeout remaining, and Venable says, Dad gummit, we're almost off the field against these guys. Now LSU, which will get the ball to start the second half, has a chance to add to the lead before the break. Play clock running down. Three, two. Just got it snapped. Three-man rush. Ball gets out. And Chase again hurts Clemson. First down inside Clemson territory. You, you press them, you get up tight, they're gonna go by you for a touchdown. You drop, you show press and drop, they're gonna get you're gonna give them space. It, it's pitch and catch. It's very simple for him to find that space and make that quick slant throw. Crank the tempo. Off play action. Burrow looking for a downfield shot. It wasn't there, but he darts forward. Skalski grabs him after a short gain. A good coverage that time by A.J. Terrell downfield. He wanted to get, go with tempo, try to catch Terrell napping, see him looking left. He wants to unload that down the left sideline the way he has all year to Jamar Chase. And that, because of that coverage by Terrell, they eventually get to Burrow. Man, Kirk, this possession feels really important. Sure does. LSU on top, getting the ball again to yeah. start the third quarter right. here. The middle eight, Dabo Sweeney talks about it, the last four and first four minutes of each half. Clemson has owned that historically. LSU trying to change that. Burrow worms his way free. How did he not get sacked? He actually got about three yards out of the play. But it, the flexibility within this 3-1-7, you're guessing really where this pressure is coming from. And they're, they're confusing the offensive line. Only problem is they're getting there, but they're not bringing Joe Burrow down. He gets positive yards instead of taking that deep sack. And now it's third and five instead of third and nine or ten. More manageable, but they're still just... One for five on third down tonight. Chase, slot to the right. Here comes the pressure. Burrow flips it out. And it is Chase making a catch. Banging off a tackler for Jefferson. It's a first down again. So Justin Jefferson has begun to get involved now. Well, as soon as he saw that Jefferson has a chance out here against Skowski, he wants that matchup right there. It's exactly what he found. He's able to make that throw. Across the middle, pass incomplete. Skowski was in coverage, tipped it, trying to find Marshall. Skowski is a great linebacker, a leader, inspires this defense, helps set the tone. Having a big night tonight. They've been bringing him a lot on pressure, but when he's underneath in coverage, He's he's if there's space, that's what Burrow wants to try to exploit. 28 seconds, LSU still with the timeout. On second and ten, Burrow does not want to take a sack at this position of the field, just flips it way out of bounds. Yeah, Third down now. And the one timeout with 21 seconds. This is not an offense that typically thinks, oh, let, you know, let's settle for a field goal. Let's get it in the middle of the field. You know, until they have to settle for a field goal, they are attacking. That's been their trademark all year with this new offense that Steve Insminger and Joe Brady have called. Don't be surprised, even on third down, if they try to find a matchup and take a shot. If they settle for a field goal attempt, it would be from 52, which would equal the long of freshman Cade York. Play clock at three. And LSU did not want to have to do it, but now, Kirk, they LSU spend their final, final time out. Timeout Burrow was taking too long to get seconds. things adjusted there. Yeah, he, he's, he's mad, too. I think he got mad 
that LSU and it ended up being the head coach coach O called a timeout he was worried that the play clock he couldn't afford another five yards here at no. the end and you're trying to stay in field goal range and Joe Burrow had a reaction as if you know slammed the ball in his hands as if he as if he was frustrated with the sideline I think the, coach O was frustrated there too I think he was yeah he didn't he didn't really care for that response they ended up using their last timeout yeah. which is critical I know they do a good job of getting the ball out but Clemson's done a pretty good job of getting pressure and confusing the offensive line with the pre snap to post snap look burning that timeout certainly has to impact the play call Absolutely. they're stopped short of a first down they would really have to hustle the field goal team out yeah yeah I mean you're talking about getting a first down and, and hoping that the clock stops getting out of bounds or as you said being in hurry up mode if they come up short and stay in bounds the field goal team poised to run out unless Burrow can gain 10 yards here. So I think he takes a shot right here. Burrow takes off and gets in the clear. Gets a block. Makes a cut and is knocked out at the five. That's gutsy without a timeout, but it works. It sure is. He, he followed the center's block. They clear out again. To take advantage of his athletic ability. Nobody in the middle after that block by the center Cushionberry. And boy, he can accelerate, you know, between he and Lawrence, they're known for their ability to throw, but both can hurt you if you forget about their legs. A 29 yard run. Again, no timeouts. First and goal, 14 seconds. Burrow's got that internal clock. If he's throwing, it's out in less than 2.5. Here comes pressure. Gets it out quickly. Touchdown! Thaddeus Moss just standing still. And LSU stretches the lead before halftime. 95-yard touchdown drive. And Moss, one of his best buddies on the team. Well, they gave him just enough time to get that ball out. He took a shot by Skowski. You can see the grimace and pain. He paid the price for his 58th touchdown pass of the season. And Randy Moss, just an LSU fan, a proud dad tonight, but he's pumped up. Third touchdown of the season for Moss and an 11 point LSU lead after they were down 10. And they get the ball, as you said, to start the second half. You can see the medics are checking out Joe Burrow. Here's the big run. Third down at 10. What are you going to go with? Look at the blocks downfield. He's pointing, trying to get it one more block to try to get it into the end zone and wisely steps out of bounds. And then this is a great, this is a great call. Once they get inside the red zone, a heck of a call by the LSU Brain Trust. They found a matchup. He recognizes bl a blitz right here on the inside. And what a great job by Moss of instead of taking that into the corner he settles down to give Burrow who just gets it off a chance to throw it into that hole in the zone. He's got the flag jacket but Skalski is the hardest hitter in this defense. You now his dad who was a linebacker told him son when you hit a fo another player you make them feel you and he does. Sure did. Yeah. Burrow. What a route by Moss. You couldn't see it there Chris but he was going to go into the corner recognize that Kendrick was in zone and just said settle down great recognition by the tight end so LSU a 21 point run they've scored touchdowns on their last three possessions this gives you a really good feel and a look for this instead of continuing out here he just settles he sees that settles and Joe Burrow saw the same thing that's what you have when you have two best friends <laughs> they see the same thing and instead of throwing that into the corner he runs the right route and Joe Burrow puts it right on the money and now Cole Brennan has been caught Burrow with three touchdown passes in the first half. Not quite the seven that he had in the first half against Oklahoma but new FBS record and you'd like his chances of owning it outright before this one is done. So Trevor Lawrence a kneel down Clemson's defense was so dominant early. You think we're doing a great job on Joe Burrow. He's thrown for 270. He's run for 55, and the lead is 11. 28 points, 359 yards, tracking towards over 700 yards of offense and 56 points. Well, 
How would LSU respond? Well, they have answered strongly, and here's Ed Orgeron with Tom Rinaldi. Ed, from down double digits first time this season to up double digits, what changed? Great game. You know, we had some bad field position at the beginning. When we started clicking on offense, we figured out what they are going to do. Now we're moving to football. We had some critical stops with our defense. This is a heck of a football game. How do you build on this momentum? We, got, we, we, we get the ball in the second half. We've got to go down the field. We've got to score. We've got to stop them. We've got to keep on playing for 60 minutes. We knew it was going to be like this in the championship game. Appreciate it, Ed. Go Tigers. Let's go to Maria. Thanks, Tom. Well, Coach, LSU with the score going into halftime. What would be the key to containing the Tigers to be back out of the locker room? Well, first of all, really sloppy finish there. Third and 19, and we get a bad P.I. Just not playing smart right now. They, they've made, listen, they're going to make some plays. A couple of throws uh, to number one were just great plays. They got great players. They had pretty good position. You know, but just, just the dumb stuff, man. Really disappointed in how we finished, and especially right there on the third and 19. We just got to play smarter, you know, and and, uh, and then we didn't play. I thought we had two bad possessions offensively. So get in here. Let's settle down. It's a long time. This is going to be a this is going to be a battle uh, in the second half. We've got two great teams, and uh, you know right now they're up. See how we can finish. Thanks, coach. You got it. There's emergency because comes the defense going to be on the field, trying to avoid this lead from getting any larger. LSU, 269 yards of offense in the second quarter. Bayou Bengals up by 11 at halftime. Coming up next, the Mercedes-Benz halftime report. Set for the second half. LSU in a 21 zip run up by 11. College football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. LSU will get the football first in the third quarter after being stymied earlier. Burrow got it going. Four touchdowns in the last five possessions. But Burrow did take a big hit from the hardest hitter on Clemson's defense. James Skalski, you see that left arm pinned against his side. Wincing in obvious pain. Didn't want to be touched by the trainers. So keep away from me. Kirk, you didn't spend much time in the locker room. Came back and rode the bike for a lot of halftime to try to stay loose. Yeah, I haven't seen that very often at halftime. A quarterback, starting quarterback comes out trying to stay loose. It looked like a shot in that rib area where it can be very, very painful. But you're right. What an incredible turnaround of events from the way this game started where Venables was confusing Burrow, and especially his offensive line. In these last four or five possessions, they got right back on track and it really shown to be the LSU offense we've seen most of the year. Burrow is back up on his feet throwing after we saw him on the bike, and Tom Rinaldi has more from the LSU sideline. As you said, Kirk, how rare is it to see the starting quarterback come out with more than 10 minutes left after halftime, get on the bike, as you mentioned, for about three minutes. What happened took that hard shot on the last touchdown drive just before the end of the half. On his way coming off the field, told teammates, Chris, don't touch me, don't touch me. Certainly, when knocked out of him, soreness in that rib area. Got off the bike, went through an extended motion, if you will, seeing how he was reacting to throwing the passes on the field. Grimacing slightly will certainly be something to look out for. Also, standout safety Grant Delpit, he was in the locker room before the half ended. Hamstring on the left, we'll have to see how that holds up. All right, thank you, Tom. LSU with the Capital One rewarding performance. More yards against Clemson in the second quarter than they give up in a game, Kirk. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> wow. it, boy, a great job of seeing his decision making and ability to make throws to these gifted receivers. Big thing in that first half with the adjustment, getting him out in, in, in the empty where he can throw, where he can run the football. Incredible accuracy downfield where Jamar Chase has been winning one on one. And then the ability to see that and the toughness that Tom just alluded to to take that hit after he made that great throw for a touchdown. Burrow looking to throw in the first play launches for Moss but it's over his head. See the way they started if you're just tuning in look at those first three drives just could not get anything going and Coach O referenced this with Tom Rinaldi. They're pinned back inside their own 10 yard line in the first few drives, but Brent Venables put a package together to confuse them. And boy, have they settled in, made in game adjustments, and given Burrow and his receivers a chance to make a lot of plays. Jefferson got off to a slow start, but he's gotten into the act. Four catches. Got Chase in the backfield. The wrinkle they've been showing the last couple of games. Yeah. He flares out, 
But he fired to the other side. And the catch is made by Moss. He'll be a few yards short of a first down. You know, you might you might ask, why would they move Clyde Edwards Hilaire, who's such an effective running back, out as a wide receiver and and move the, the top receiver into the backfield. And, and again, it's all about giving a, a, a different look, creating some potential confusion, and eventually creating a matchup, maybe with Jamar Chase against a linebacker one on one coming out of the backfield. Right away, a big play in the third quarter as Thompson tries to get off the field and prevent Burrow from stretching this double digit lead. Show, showing a lot of pressure. That's what Burrow looks over, gets confirmation, adjusts some of the receivers. Three are bunched to the right. Here comes the blitz. Burrow is going to be swarmed. They didn't pick it up, but he didn't make a quick enough decision. And that's a big sack for Clemson. Logan Rudolph and Skalski. Yeah, Cushenberry, the, the center, has a tough decision to make because he's got Tyler Davis matched up against him here, and then you got Skalski coming there. He's, he can't take both. A guard's not there to help him. He's got to let one of them go, and eventually they actually both get to Joe Burrow there on that third down. Clemson now with 45 sacks on the season. Five straight years of 40 plus sacks. They got three tonight. And there's a flag. And the punt is bounding down to the 10 yard line. But they interfered with the returner. It'll improve Clemson's field position. You can't really overstate how crucial that was to stop the bleeding if you're Venables in the Clemson with the defense. Opportunity to catch a kick, kicking team number 13. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. I mean, they First believe down. in their comeback ability. Oh, yeah. You go down 18, it's something else. Maria? Well, Chris Dabo Sweeney saying coming out of the locker room, his message was simple to his team, that we've been here before. Remember, it was just a game ago that they were down by 16 against Ohio State. He reminded them that it's a 60-minute game, so just continue to play and make the plays that are your job. And that's the plan Clemson has coming out of the locker room, guys. Well, thank you, Maria. That's a costly penalty on John Trey Kirkland, the Backup receiver on special teams because Lawrence takes over exactly at midfield. And ETN tries the left side. Only about a two yard gain. You know, Clemson typically makes great adjustments at halftime. In fact, if you look at the last three playoff games that Clemson has played in, they've only allowed the seven points. They have more sacks than they've given up points in those three games. So, you know. Their defense can keep them in this game. It's exactly how they needed to start this second half, getting that three and out. And now they've got great field position. See if they can capitalize. Lawrence making the adjustments on second and eight. There's a matchup he could win. ETN in motion. Lawrence is looking across the middle, and it is the matchup Kirk, that you pointed out. A catch by Higgins, who hasn't been active enough so far. He took a big hit there by the safety. Delpit coming up, trying to separate the football. I circled that because that's a matchup that they feel good about. Higgins, you see that outside leverage, it opens up that quick slant, and there's that, boy, a big hit right in that thigh area of Higgins, who goes down. Delpit who is an accomplished center fielder, but has played closer to the line of scrimmage to make impact plays like that this season. He struggled with injuries throughout. And the good news is that Higgins is up and walking off. You and I were talking at halftime, and I, I, I noticed it, just looking at all the different stats, one that really stuck out to me was I, I thought T. Higgins had a chance to have a big night tonight against the style of coverage that these corners play with outside leverage. Only had one reception. I know he had the reverse for the touchdown, but one reception Again, with your best receiver against man-to-man, -man, he's got to win this second half to get separation. Plenty of time on first down. Yet another pre-snap chess match. Lawrence, and they pick up the pressure. Tries to scramble free. They grab his face mask. It'll be an LSU penalty. He's going to be knocked down at the 30, and then it'll move to 15 yards closer to the goal line. Chason grabbed the mask. Yeah, Chason trying to, how about the protection by that offensive line? It was very good coverage downfield. Chason just trying to get his arm to try to affect Trevor Lawrence and clearly grabs a hold Personal of that face foul. mask. Face mask, defense number 18. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. 
So two crucial penalties by LSU. One interfering with the punt returner, and now that personal foul. Clemson couldn't have a, asked for a better start in the third there, quarter. There are a lot of people that have watched LSU this year and watched the way that first half ended and thought, wow, they scored at the end of the first half. They're going to get the ball to start the second half. There's a chance they go up 35-17. That's a big hole to try to come back on against Joe Burrow. They get a three and out. Now inside the red zone, they've got to score a touchdown here to get it to 28-24. ETN. Powerful run down inside the 10. Ran into Patrick Queen, the I, linebacker. I love watching him run. Came in as a freshman from the state of Louisiana. Just, I think all of us that watched him that first year said, wow, look at his acceleration. This guy, his first two or three steps can go by people. And his second year, he got a little bigger. And then his third year, he's become more patient and got more powerful in his lower half. He run through those arm tackles. He's got it again. Running through tackles again. It'll be first and goal. Clemson down at the three. Impressed by that offensive line here on this drive. They didn't think they could have a lot of success because of the mass of that interior. But here, these last couple of plays, boy, they're challenging the interior of LSU's defense, running right at them. ETN again. Muscles, touchdown, Clemson. And they slice into the lead. A perfect start to the second half for the Tigers. You're a Clemson fan. That's exactly what you wanted to see. The Clemson offense looks like it's going to maybe stay on the field. Let's make sure he got in, broke the plane before he touched the his knee touch. Looked like he definitely got across. They're putting the ball in the left hash. There's the AT&T pylon cam as they continue to make sure he broke the plane. Looks like he did. So. They'll go for two to cut it to a three-point game. Yeah, a lot of coaches believe in analytics. Sometimes we scratch our heads as fans thinking, what in the heck, it's so early. Why are they doing this? But these new analytics tell coaches to do some things like this. Lawrence ducks under pressure, delivers, caught. Amiria Rogers has got it. And that's their first successful two-point conversion. And it is suddenly a three-point game. 50-yard drive after the penalty and the punt in six plays, 237. Impressive. In the locker room, hoping that the defense, I'm sure, is able to get a stop. They do. They get the ball back to Trevor Lawrence with that great foot position. Offensive line, quarterback, receivers in the back, ETN. A perfect first drive for Clemson. Hi, Bob New Orleans. Goodyear providing the aerial coverage, introducing the newest honorary member of the College Football Hall of Fame, the Goodyear Blimp. Goodyear, more driven. And coming up, don't miss an exclusive look at Marvel Studios' new movie, Black Widow, due in May. And this has changed, Kirk, the complexion here. I think the LSU faithful with that big lead, their offense is rolling, thought, we got this. Yeah. But all of a sudden, Clemson, the comeback Kings two weeks ago against Ohio State, have drawn within three two major penalties by LSU aiding that last drive of course How about Joe Burrow with Joe Brady look at all these quarterbacks that they've gone up against just knocking them out dodgeball yeah, look, style. fell down <laughs> yeah. one after Rom another hurts <laughs> one guy left they haven't knocked over Lawrence yet that's for sure <laughs> dodgeball star Vince Vaughn is in the house. He's kind of adopted LSU. He was there at the SEC championship. Sure has. Game. Big Watch college him. football fan. Tiger sideline. Burrow back to work now. The lead suddenly just three. Bringing those tight splits, condensed formation here on first and ten. All 22 guys close to each other. Burrow flushed again. Sacked for a fourth time. Isaiah Simmons got him. When you bring in tight receivers, look how many bodies you have inside this area right here. That's a lot of different guys that potentially can blitz. They bring Tanner Muse, Isaiah Simmons is the one who eventually gets home. When they brought him off the edge, he's been able to get there and he has great feel as a safety of not just when to blitz, but just that instincts to get to the quarterback. Second and 15. Great part about the spread is it makes it easier to identify where the pressure is coming from. I wonder if Brady's going to 
shelve Kirk that bunch formation. Yeah, and, and again, this this three man front gives Brent Venables a lot of different looks. Chase off and running again. They get a big chunk of yardage, beating Kendrick and setting up the third and short now. Well, Kendrick ends up backing out and creating space. And again, to me, that that's the disaster. That's a disaster when you give Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson room underneath. You've got to you got to mix it up. I understand it, but boy, it, it, with Burrow and those receivers underneath, when they have space, they are lethal. Crucial third down here. So they're tightened up with their coverage. Obviously, third and short, cross the board. Burrow gets it out, almost intercepted. Oh, Nolan Turner who made the clinching pick against Ohio State, jumped the route, had the ball in his hands. Not only did he jump the route, Chris, but he had to work around a pick. They, they saw man-to-man. -man. Watch how he works around that pick and then gets his eyes up anticipating the football. Great job of working around traffic, jumping the route. And if he comes up with that catch, Turner could potentially be a hero again. Remember the hero against the Buckeyes with the, the clinching interception. Yeah, he was burned all night, but made the clinching pick when Olave fell down in the end zone. And the punt from Von Rosenberg bounces out of bounds. So Clemson gets the football back down just three. You're watching the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. The College Football Playoff National Championship Game, presented by AT&T, is brought to you by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville, Capital One, What's in Your Wallet, and the Nachos Party Pack from Taco Bell. It's hard to match this building for magical moments in a variety of sports. Brady's first Super Bowl here. Michael Jordan first announcing himself as a superstar, hitting the shot as a freshman. Carmelo Anthony and Syracuse won a title in here. Key Smart beat Syracuse. Wow. The Chris Webber timeout. And look at the two fights. Muhammad Ali regained the title in a rematch against Spinks. And Leonard frustrated Duran, who eventually said no Moss in this building. Nobody's saying no Moss here tonight. <laughs> no. That's incredible. What's your what's your, your the one that sticks out to you the most? Muhammad Ali? That would be right up there. Yeah. Wish I'd been here that night. <laughs> this heavyweight fight, Clemson has scored the first eight points, and they go to number eight, Justin Ross, who's wrestled out, but it's a first down near the 30. I love you when you get the athletic Trevor Lawrence out on the edge, where he's got a levels concept, a deep uh, intermediate and an underneath throw, and it gives him the option to run it or throw it. Makes a nice throw there on first and 10. And the Tigers thought they were going to crank the tempo, slow things down, and check with the cards on the sidelines. I mean, they were hitting the tight end in the first half. Brennan Galloway, when they'd flex him out like this, it's something they'll probably go back to at some point in the second half. Play action. Zipped on the slant. Ball tipped. Juggled. Is the catch made? Yes. Joseph Ngata made it look difficult, but he did collect it. What? Now they're saying incomplete. Oh, really? I thought it, I, that ball must have hit off the ground because it ended up in his arms. They're going after Fulton. They, they've not gone after Stingley on the other side, the freshman. But they have been attacking and got it. I, I, I still can't see where it hit the ground there. I'm not sure it did. They're not buzzing down, so it's second and ten. Now, now they will. Now they are. The pass is under review. Yeah, it hit the hands, the knee. I don't think it hit the ground, though. See the umpire trying to look around bodies to get a closer look. Why? Oh, it did. There it is. Yep. Take it back. It did deflect off the ground. Jacoby Stevens in coverage there. So that umpire who leaned around to get a look at that did make a correct call. Good call by the official. You're right. And I. As I said, they're going after Christian Fulton. After and, review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Incomplete pass, second down. Whether it's been T. Higgins or Ngata in this case, the, the freshman, they'd like that matchup against one. That's a reversal. Typically, teams have really gone after Derek Stingley more than they have Fulton. 
Well, he's gained quite a reputation as a freshman with six interceptions. He sure has. Especially the way he played late in the year. But Fulton typically has no picnic to go after no. either. No. Second and ten. Confusion again with Stevens and Queen. Rodgers came in motion. They flip it back to ETN, who gets a block and a short gain. I'll tell you, if Justin Ross makes a block there on Patrick Queen, who ended up making the tackle, that's a touchdown. There's nobody left to be able to slow down and catch up to ETN. Eight white saves the day. He was patient. He waited. Catches him from behind. And it was a missed block by Justin Ross. So that's, as I said, a big touchdown for the Tigers. So like Cervenka might have shoved the player in the back and gotten away with an illegal block. Third and seven, Lawrence flips it high off the hands, and they dive for it. Incomplete. Vincent came in diving, trying to hope for a pick off the carom, but it's fourth down. Well, they're expecting man to man, so they're going to go with a crosser, but they, they kind of disguise it, sit back and play zone. And once that ball's in the air in the middle of the defense, I mean, that's a, that's a dream for LSU. Somehow that ball hits the ground before the safety. The nickelback Vincent can come up with a pick. So each quarterback that had a long streak without an interception has had a close call tonight. No picks for Trevor Lawrence since week eight. Well over 200 attempts. Not as good as most of Spire's earlier punts. And Stingley comes up to make a fair catch at the 32-yard line. 36-yard punt. LSU back to work up by three still. Well, the first half began with Joe Burrow and LSU going three and out twice. That's exactly the yeah. way the second half has begun. Yeah, Clemson's really cranked up the pressure, being more aggressive, trying to get to Joe Burrow before he can get them, especially with throws downfield. And Joe's looked a little irritated coming off the field. You know, we mentioned how he was on a bike at halftime, and he's showing a little bit of frustration, not quite looking the same as of right now coming into this drive. wonder if the pain from that shot that he took from Skalski is playing a part in that it's been sacked four times now and hit a bunch hesitation and Burrow if he is hurting doesn't show it there as he picks up 10 with the scamper Tom Kirk I do think you pick up on something whether it's irritation or as Chris suggested pain you could certainly see that Joe Burrow's gone down a little more readily I know it's been the teeth of the rush but he has not played that run is by far the most demonstrative thing he's done in this half a play action launching downfield one more time to chase it was over his head LSU fans wanted a flag but that's real uncatchable so they run the football with the quarterback, even though he's not feeling 100%. They come right back to a shot downfield, and Chase has, has a couple steps there on Kendrick, who's one-on-one -on -one without a safety over the top. He grabs onto him, and it looks like pass interference, but I agree with you, Chris. The ball was past him once he grabbed onto him. So second and ten. Skalski lurking, moving around right behind the nose tackle. Got to hurry. And once again, the movement yeah. of Venable's Play defense game, causing offense. some hesitation and confusion. Still and that cost him five yards. T. Higgins going into the locker room. Remember, he took that shot. Looked like in the, the, the thigh area going into their locker room to check him out. I'm with you, Chris, that all that movement by Skalski, other guys looking over LSU, looking over to get the check. There's a lot, a lot going on for both sides and cost him five yards. And every defensive coach in the SEC said the same thing. You better change it up. Give him different looks. High formation defense and an option straight run from Burrow showing that the play callers aren't terribly concerned about the quarterback's health. Not much of a gain there. It'll be third and long. Well, in the opening segment of, the, of tonight's uh, game, I said that Joe Burrow plays quarterback like a middle linebacker. You know, he was a two-star recruit, not heavily recruited. He said he played defense safety most of his younger career. So he doesn't mind the physicality. And even though he's hurting, he's not going to back down. He's the first offensive guy in the family. His dad and older brothers yeah. were both defensive players. At Nebraska. Here we go. 
See how they try to get pressure. Only one defensive lineman, but Skalski comes streaming through. Now, can Chase get there? Yes, he can. Sidesteps the tackler. He's got a convoy still running down into the red zone. An enormous conversion for LSU. Watch why it's so important to be a good athlete as an offensive lineman. A left tackle. Keep an eye on Charles in the block and how he kind of just turns the defender to the inside and gives Chase the boundary. Gives him a chance to get outside to use his speed. LSU was deadly in the red zone. Three red zone trips, three touchdowns in the first half. Wow, does Jefferson pay the price as Skalski is laying the lumber tonight. Big hit there, but great focus and concentration by Jefferson, who is very sure-handed. All these receivers catch the ball with their hands. You see his eyes peeking, knowing that he was about to get hit, but did a good job turning and protecting the football. Again, we knew it was going to be strength on strength. They are so precise, so sophisticated down here. Clemson is so stout and stingy in the red zone. They are going to stop and review whether or not Skalski targeted in that hit against Jefferson. So this is a hugely important review. Skalski, an incredibly important part of the defense. And we'll bring in Bill Lamagne. The crown of the helmet was lowered on Jefferson, Bill. What, what is your opinion of this hit? If I were on the field or in the replay booth, he's lowered the helmet, forcible contact. It's crown of the helmet. This is a targeting call. It's exactly what we saw with Ohio State against Clemson when Sean Wade lowered his head and used the crown of his helmet. Even though it's a it's a different player, here's a receiver, but it's the same principle using that crown of the helmet. Right, and he's a, he's made the catch, so he's not defenseless anymore, so only crown of the helmet applies. Right. And the crown is used here, forcible. And for the fans, Bill, it doesn't matter if it's helmet to helmet when it comes to the crown. It doesn't matter where the I, defender hits. The exactly. Team. I don't have to hit you in the head. Technically, from your head to your toes, I cannot basically spear you. Skalski, an old school linebacker, still wears that neck brace. And we said that they mean it as a compliment when he hits you. It's like he's got concrete in his helmet. And this is a, an enormous decision. If they flag him for targeting and take well, him off the field. It's Jake Venables, Brent son, Brent's After son review, comes into play. Personal foul, targeting, defense number 47. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Skalski with is disbelief. for the remainder of the game. That's the leader. That's the glue to that front. And a big part of how they tried to defend tonight. He's shell-shocked. Has to leave the field, go to the locker room. Targeting rule is controversial. Many fans just hate it. But that, just like Sean Wade's hit on Lawrence, is the letter of the rule. And Brent Venables, as we said, Jake Venables, who has played quite a bit this year. Physical linebacker. But it's not just the physicality, it's the knowledge of the scheme that Skalski provided that now Venables will have to understand and get lined up and, and be blitzing and be effective. First and goal, an immediate test for this Tigers defense minus their leader. Burrow backpedals, flips it far side, catch made Moss. Is he in? No signal. Touchdown for a second time. The tight end has found the end zone. And momentum swings back to the purple and gold. Now, Jamar Chase did a good job. Now, you got to be careful on these picks. You got to make it look like you're running around. Does a nice job of getting in the way of Kendrick to open up that flat for the tight end, Moss. And Thaddeus Moss equals his season total of touchdowns of two with two tonight is his foot out of bounds before that ball broke the plane they have to look on their quad box at two different replays and coordinate it here is the foot out ball difficult to say bill what, what is your take after seeing both of these angles before the foot's down i've got the ball breaking the plane of the goal line we have a touchdown you've got Skalski heading to the locker room. Boy, what an enormous last two minutes of this game. That's what Bill is referring to before he steps out. The ball's extended as it break the plane. 
Here's a look from the AT&T pylon cam. Ruling You'll see the foot there. Is under review. Pylon cam got wiped out by two players there. There's the foot out. Difficult to say with certainty. So unless they can find irrefutable evidence that that wasn't a touchdown, that call would stand. And that is not just a, a touchdown that will extend LSU's lead pending the PAT back to double digits, but now without Skalski, that is a deflating blow to a very tough minded, resilient team. But this is a challenge for Clemson. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not just trying to overcome the deficit, but to lose the, the leader of that defense in the middle. What, by the way, really well designed play. As, as I said, Jamar Chase had to be careful as he was setting that, that screen to open that up for the tight end. Got to make it look like you're running a route instead of blocking. We talked about the great versus great matchup. LSU's red zone offense against Clemson's red zone defense. Huge edge LSU. If this touchdown stands, that's four TDs and four red zone trips. And Clemson's just not used to getting mesmerized down here in that department. One more look. This may be the best angle. It's the ref cam. Ball across the plane right there. Yeah, that's what Bill said right there. Perhaps just a fraction before the left toe hits the white, and that's all it has to be. Again, it has to be irrefutable to take away the call, and I think it's going to stand. Yeah. Don't you, Bill? It, it looks I like actually would confirm it. Confirm I've, it? Got, yeah. I've got the ball just breaking the plane before that's down. I think it's an excellent call by the official on the goal line. Here's the play design I talked about with Chase. Watch him. He had to be careful of, of kind of setting this screen and making it look like he's running a route. Does a good enough job, even though his arms extended, they got away with it and freed up Moss to get to After that corner. After review, the ruling of a touchdown stands as called. So Burrow with his fourth touchdown pass tonight, his second to his good buddy Moss, now has the FBS single season touchdown record all to himself. He had shared it momentarily with Colt Brennan and LSU. Chance to go back up by 10 with York on for the PAT. 43 yard screen to Chase Kirk once again, number one with a huge impact play to spark a touchdown drive. And the lead is 10. 5.13 to play in the third quarter. Time for Trevor Lawrence and the Tigers to try to answer. Goodyear providing the aerial coverage. Best part of every kickoff is the drive that comes next. Go further with Goodyear, more driven. Right next door to the Superdome is the Smoothie King Center, home of the Pelicans, and they'll host the Clippers at 3.30 Eastern time Saturday on ABC, trying to get Zion Williamson back and healthy and in prime time. LeBron and the Lakers on top of the Western Conference take on Harden and Westbrook and the Rockets, both games streaming on the ESPN app. So once again, the deficit is double digits for Lawrence and the Tigers, and the kickoff gets away from ETN, and it'll be a touchback. So Trevor has shown his toughness and his resilience, and he's going to answer the bell one more time now, Kurt. He sure is going to have to. I mean, it is, it, for, for Clemson to continue to fight back, it means Trevor Lawrence in the passing game are going to be able to have to make some big plays. And Lawrence is more than capable, obviously, of doing that. But will he have time to throw? And can his receivers help him out and try to win? They continue. Remember, they're going after Fulton. One, trying to stay away from Stingley. Not to say that they won't eventually try to go that way. He, right now he's into the boundary down at the bottom. Lawrence without a touchdown pass tonight. He's got a streak of 24 straight with the TD. They've contained him as a runner so far tonight. Much better than Ohio State did. But that's a nice first down game. Yeah, that, that defense is locked in on trying to take away nine and his explosive ability. Linebackers both flowing that way and gave him a nice crease on that left side. Follows his blocks and gets some positive yards. Only down 10. Now you're just under five minutes in the third. You see Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott continue to stick with their offensive game plan. Pressure is picked up. Lawrence gets it out. And it's intercepted. Christian Fulton. There's a flag down after the interception. That would be 
The first pick for Lawrence in a long time if it stands, but it's going to come back. And that official from the back end called that. He had the better view. Fulton, who's been picked on this time, got inside and tried to jump the, the route by Justin Ross. Where's your in disbelief? Defense number one, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Dave Aranda and his defense. Now we'll have to dig deep here. Another penalty has set up Clemson near midfield. And he's got his left hand there. He just grabbed onto the shoulder as Ross made his cut to the post. He went to the inside. Tough to see there. But he had his hand on him, which was fine. But when he made his move to the inside, he clinched and grabbed onto the jersey. And that's the look that the official had. You can grab the jersey as long as you don't turn or impede the receiver. In the official judgment that happened not popular with the LSU fans. Play action launching downfield for Ross who's just too tightly covered. Come on. It's pressured. Stingley was in coverage there. How about the coverage by Stingley? It, it, it's almost like that side of the field is shut down. And Justin Ross is an elite receiver. And what I love about Stingley as a young corner in the college game especially is he played receiver in high school. He has those instincts, and as soon as that receiver starts to peek up with his eyes, that's when Stingley starts to peek up himself. But there, stride for stride in phase. Second and ten. Lawrence is pressured. ETN. And she's just a false start. Is a flag before the snap. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 73. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Cerebral right tackle is senior Tremaine Ankrum. Guilty. Stingley, who led the SEC, six interceptions, one of the best in the country, a remarkable true freshman season. Only freshman to make the AP first team All-American list. T. Higgins remains in the locker room for Clemson. First and 15, late pressure, completion ETN, and it is blown up by Patrick Queen, a loss after the catch of one. Uh, he saw this the entire time. He's here. He works to the inside, but he's got his eyes exactly where they need to be on ETN. Has him on lockdown. Didn't hesitate at all. You know, he's so twitchy, has such suddenness at that inside linebacker spot. He's almost like a safety play in there. Great in coverage. Shows it, shows it there. Clemson, which is converted just one of eight third downs tonight, needs 16 here. LSU giving a big cushion. Chase on pressuring the quarterback enough to force the high throw and it's fourth down. That's exactly right. He didn't get there, but from the blind side of a quarterback, he affected him. He's had success in getting around Carmen, the left tackle, and I think it hurried him, made him uncomfortable. And as a, as a rush in coming off the edge there, that's all you have to do. You don't always have to get there and, and get the sack. That's his 10th overthrow because of the pressure that LSU has been able to get on on him. Spire is running again and Stingley comes up makes the catch and his hit immediately. He thought he might create a big return but knocked down there. You know there's a difference between these two quarterbacks who are both superb Kirk in almost every situational category. There is a difference under pressure. Yes. Lawrence is under 50% yeah. while pressured which yep. is not bad. Burrow has been exceptional. Well, it year. speaks volumes to me of where Joe Burrow is as a fifth-year guy. Trevor, as beautiful as he is at 6'6", 220, is still growing in that capacity. And that's why next year will be so good for him to continue to grow. This is a big series in his football game with LSU up 10. Edwards Hilaire not next to the quarterback. It's Chris Curry who filled in for Edwards Hilaire when his hamstring hurt in that semifinal game and ran with great energy. Burrow hesitating, taking off, buying time, and just flips it off. 
and Jefferson in space darts down inside the 30. Sometimes it's just not fair when he can make a play like that on the run. How about the awareness to stay behind the line of scrimmage by Joe Burrow? He brings the defense to him. Here's his athletic ability. Now the awareness. Just trying to pull that defender 12. K-Ball Wallace to him, which he did, and then dumps it. Great job by nine. 35-yard gain. Now Burrow looking for the kill shot down the field. Launching again for Chase, who could not come up with it. A superb night. But that could have been another touchdown. Boy, they are in sync. Here's Joe's dad looking on. I think this ball is thrown perfectly outside shoulder. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? You, you couldn't have handed that any better to Chase. And Chase, I don't know if he lost it. Let's not get It's not a mistake. This kid is gifted eight receptions, 218 yards. He's obviously having a big night. But, boy, he'd love to have that one back. That should have been the hat trick of touchdowns. Yeah. Bounced right off the shoulder pad. Couldn't have placed that ball any better. Clemson defense just trying to hang on as the LSU offense get near the red zone again. And Burrow hesitates. What's he going to do here? Sidesteps the tackler and somehow finds a few yards. Let's keep in mind that James Kowski is not in the middle of that defense. Jake Venables is in there. Coach's son understands the defense. But face it, even though he's a great player and has a great future, Skowski's played all year and is making all the calls. It's T. Higgins, which is important to see him coming back for Clemson. The one key Tiger defender ejected, one of the best offensive players limited at the moment. So it's third down again. Burrow needs seven. They are in French field goal range. And Clemson calls a timeout. Not ideal down 10 to spend a timeout on defense, but you can see how important Dabo Sweeney believes this play is right here. Clemson gets that dream start to the second half. They get the three and out, touchdown, two point conversion. But Burrow and LSU just taking a deep breath and going back to work and reclaim momentum. Yeah, so we, we said before the drive, such a, a pivotal sequence of events right here. Not only with the injury to Skowski, the touchdown by LSU, they get the ball right back, and now they've got a chance to put another touchdown on the board. And at that point, going into the fourth quarter, it's very, very hard, obviously, to play catch up with this LSU offense. So, yeah, we saw that spread look. And, and when you see that, that empty look, you know what we've seen a lot of tonight? You got to either defend all those receivers or you got to keep a guy in the box to account for Burrow in the quarterback draw. He's hurt him, even though he's hurting himself. He's hurt him with the quarterback draw out of this look. And the guy who was spying him, Skalski, as you said, not in there now. Both Chase and Jefferson are to the left. See, somebody's got to come out to the bottom to help out against those three receivers. Instant pressure, ball out quickly. Chase has got it, but he doesn't have first down yardage. Caught in heavy traffic. And Venables was right there in the area. It's fourth down, and here comes the field goal team. Really good job by that defense. Ball comes out quick. They blitz Tanner Muse, but they did a good job of keeping their eyes up and had a, a, a four or five different uh, orange hats there running to the football. Ed York, 21 of 26 on the year, but between 40 and 49, hardly automatic. He's just five for nine from this distance. And this for a 13 point lead. Drives it, but it's going to slide wide right. So LSU cannot add to the lead. They come up empty. It's a big stop for Clemson without Skalski on the field. Huge stop. The drop by Jamar Chase. Talked about, we both said how big that was. That's a ball he catches nine and a half times out of 10. That's a touchdown. That's potentially a knockout shot up 42 to 35. Instead, he keeps Clemson in this game. They get a stop and then they miss the missed field goal. They're only down 10 now. Still here in the third quarter. Ocho knows that they let a great chance get away to stretch the lead and really put this Clemson offense on the ropes late third quarter. It's an option look, the late pitch, dangerous one. Etienne got it, but Patrick Queen got him for a loss. Speed option. They go into the boundary, and, and a great job by, by Chase on forces the pitch, and then a missed block that allows Queen to be able to get there. Now, option football, if you take the quarterback, 
there should be an alley to be able to get to the, that edge and be able to pick up some yards. But because of the quickness of eight queen, he got off the block and was able to make the play on ETN. As you well know, my friend, think about the option. Quarterback's going to take a hit. <laughs> yeah. Lawrence did that time. It's a low throw, incomplete. Try to get it to Higgins. Now it's third and 12. Now, there, there wasn't much of an opportunity there, obviously, after the catch. But T. Higgins, who's battling through some pain, you got to show mental toughness. You got to fight through the pain. You got to come up with catches like that. Pick up six yards, seven yards. Give yourself a chance to make it more like a third and four or five. Now, third and 12. Higgins in the slot to the right. Here comes the pressure. Lawrence backpedals, delivers a throw over the head of Ross. That was a tough, tough throw into coverage, and it's fourth down. Yeah, he did a good job of kind of sliding away from the protection, but I got to give all the LSU secondary some credit. These Clemson receivers are not getting off of this coverage. I mean, it, it's tight coverage and long, tough throws by Trevor Lawrence. I mean, that's not easy execution there, and it's a good job by, this, by that secondary. You got Justin Jefferson. Not Stingley back to return this punt. Spires kind of hit a knuckleball. It sounded ugly. It wasn't very long. And Jefferson's going to run up and make a fair catch at the 42. So good field position for Burrow as they continue in the final minute of this third quarter curve to try to get the touchdown that just might go a long way to securing this championship. What were some of the, the, the big boxing classics that we've had in here? You said Spinks against Ali and yep. the No Moss. The no Moss. That was more about tactical supremacy than but, a knockout. But it, but it just feels like Clemson's on the ropes right now, just kind of hanging on, and LSU's trying to come up with a knockout shot. It's a 33 yard punt. Burrow right back to work. That possession just 50 seconds. Edwards Hilaire showing his patience and picks his way for a first down gain of four. Kept two safeties back. Quick indicator for Burrow to see that. They're going to try to run the ball every time into that look. They're forcing them to give them a single high safety. And if they do, they're going to go right back to Jamar Chase at the top, see if he can win one on one. Edwards Hilaire, meanwhile, has been kept in check very well by this Clemson defense. The star tailback. Rushing for just 39 yards. He got a couple catches. Burrow from the pocket. Flips it short on cue. Edward Solaire makes the catch. And he fights for everything. He's not interested in going out of bounds. No, he'll, he'll never go out of bounds. You he only it for so long, right? Yeah. yeah you, you know, we we're kind of sensing that they want to try to give the ball. It looks like a flag came in late on that play. 73. The, McGee looked like he got in and pushed somebody late. Might have got Isaiah Simmons. It would be a mental mistake that would drive Orgeron crazy. Again, the importance of this possession, trying to stretch the lead. It moved the ball to the Clemson 37. The Personal foul. Offense, number 73. 15-yard penalty. Remains first and 10. The senior has been battling an ankle injury, healthy enough to go, but an absolutely senseless play at the end as he comes and hits Simmons. Well, you, number one, you appreciate the effort. Anytime linemen are downfield, I, I, they're 320 pounds. You love to see the intensity. You just got to be mentally sharper. You got to be. You got to have some awareness to you. You can't make a, a bonehead mistake like that late in this game, especially when you have Clemson on the ropes. A dead ball. It's still a first down, but the ball back in LSU yep. territory. So. LSU 15 minutes away if they can protect this lead from capping a 15 and 0 season 35 25 now a treat here an exclusive look at Marvel Studios new movie Black Widow which will be in theaters everywhere coming up this May 10 point game entering the final quarter college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T LSU with a first down near midfield trying to stretch the lead. Each team with a touchdown in the third quarter. Clemson taking just one point off the halftime deficit by a two point conversion. And Joe Burrow close to a 400 yard passing game. Not quite the 
astronomical numbers against the Sooners, but against this defense, after a slow start, extremely impressive. Edwards Allaire goes in motion. Here comes the pressure, and he's open in the flat. Can they make a mess? He spins free, but just able to hold him up long enough as Kendrick. <laughs> just like to arrive. Help! Help! <laughs> Help! Get out there one on one with him. It's really tough because even if you get to him, the strength in his lower body, it's just hard to bring him down. But now you fake it to him, Burrow, wanting to throw downfield. Now just buying time. Still scampering around and delivers a throw to Moss. And the tight end makes another big play inside the Clemson 40. Just, Randy's kid's having a night. He sure is. You just can't. You can't ha You can't cover a guy that long. Look how long he's keeping this play alive. They're essentially rushing three and dropping eight. And Joe, the last three or four games, is completing 90% of his passes against rush three, drop eight. Wow. And that time... <laughs> You, know, you give him enough time with his accuracy, he's going to find somebody open. Remember, they've been going to chase on this wheel route from the slot. Try to bring pressure again. Slant. Jefferson. Catch. Gain of eight on first down. Kayvon Wallace stopped him. And Clemson got away with one there. If Joe Burrow would have seen it, he had a touchdown. And Jamar Chase said, oh, I had him. Edwards Hilaire barrels forward downhill, first down to the 25. Can't find every open receiver, though. No, that's most of them. Yeah, he, he does. He does. There's still, remember, we still trying to challenge the, the inside. Tanner Muse, who's a safety, he's walked up as a backer in this game with that, that three down line. One linebacker now is Jake Venables and his seven defensive backs. They thought if they went to this look, Steve Insminger telling us they thought they thought they would have to be able to run the ball. In fact, they run Burrow more than than Clyde Edwards Hilaire tonight. They could work on the play clock now. Snap it at four. Burrow has lots of time and delivers and chase that time a short catch and not much after it. Jefferson I should say over the two yard gain. Really tight coverage by Kayvon Wallace, versatile senior. If you look at this secondary, because to defend this offense, you need Kendrick as a corner, to A.J. Terrell as a corner, and their third best cover guy is a safety, 12, Kayvon Wallace, who has to hold up there in many plays against Justin Jefferson. He's on him again, Kirk, off to the left. Chase, the left outside of the formation on second and nine. They're bringing it. Burrow's got time, launching for the end zone, jump ball, touchdown, Terrence Marshall. And Burrow believes that was a crucial play to stretch the lead. You can see by the reaction, dropped a dime again. Uh, he, he's going he's gonna to find that matchup, and, and Marshall, who hasn't had a, a many chances, they've been going to Jamar Chase. We just circled saying that he can come from that spot. This time it's Marshall. It's 6-4. He puts it up, adjusts back to the ball, and Kendrick just never had a chance on the play. Marshall, a big, tall 6-4 receiver, was sometimes forgotten, but the success of Chase and Jefferson makes his 13th touchdown reception. You saw Burrow's parents, Jimmy and Robin, celebrating. LSU getting closer to a championship, up by 17. Total weight to play. Plenty of post-championship game coverage with Scott Van Pelt. We'll have the post-game reactions. We'll join the show. The winning coach will add his take. And the first look at the odds for next season after the game on ESPN, also the ESPN app. They're playing the Garth Brooks Classic, the Serenade at Tiger Stadium, calling Baton Rouge. Sweet Baton Rouge. And up for the Tigers campus down here in New Orleans and all over this state. They are preparing for the party to begin if LSU can hold on to what is now a 17-point lead with about 12 minutes to play. From the goal line, Etienne's going to bring it out, break a tackle, and it'll make something happen on special teams. Got to hold your breath. The kicker was down there to help force him down at the 30. Well, we've seen Jamar Chase in his spot, the slot. This time it's Marshall. 
to get him one on one. You're gonna, he's going to take these shots. You know, whether it's into the boundary or this time to the field, just put it up. Let the receiver adjust to the ball. Defensive back never sees it. Joe Burrow, he has such confidence in these receivers to win. And look at that size and length of Marshall. And Burrow comes off after that and said, "It's time to fit me for a ring. I won that Heisman. Now it's time to fit me for that ring." He does not lack confidence, and his confidence is even growing now. 442 yards, five touchdown passes. Lawrence, desperate to answer, delivers a high throw. Kirk, he's just been off target a lot tonight. That was over Justin Ross again. Yeah, yeah, he, he's, he just seems a, a bit out of sorts, you know, and I, and I think LSU deserves some credit for that because it, even when they've not been able to necessarily flush him out of the pocket, even when he's been in the pocket, I think he f has felt some pressure. He now has 13 throws that have been overthrown to his receivers. Second and ten. Sometimes when you try to put so much on it, the ball will sail on you. Play action. Another long throw. Catch made by Ross, who scoots out of bounds. They'll move the sticks out across the 40. Yeah, There's they're, still plenty of time. Yeah, plenty of time. And, and, and you can see by the energy of Trevor Lawrence and after that completion and first down, even he's thinking about the clock. There's an awareness there. they got to go some form of their own kind of tempo, but they're not breakneck speed where they're just out of control. You start to do the math and figure the possessions. Can Clemson score 17? Sure, but really can't afford to allow LSU anything on offense. Lawrence rolls. They pick up the pressure, and again, the throw is low, and a flag comes in. Vincent was covering Rodgers and grabbed him. Pass interference, defense number five. The ball will be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Let's see if he grabs jersey or grabs its hips, maybe. Hey, grab the arm, the left arm. Grab, grab the hold of it. Moves the ball in LSU territory. Tenth penalty on LSU, double the number. Of Clemson. Now Clemson goes for this empty look. Lawrence has plenty of time and launches downfield. Higgins has got it for a touchdown. A flag is down. Will it come back for offensive pass interference? Yes, that's the signal. Vincent, it was just guilty of pass interference on the other side, pass says I got shoved. Offense number five. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Ball underthrown. Higgins tries to adjust. There's a sh push and shove back and forth. They feel that that's on on Higgins. It grabs a hold. And Higgins grabs a hold of the jersey first. He grabbed the hold to give himself momentum to try to work back to the ball, and I think that's what they caught him for. Clemson fans turn to boo. That takes a touchdown off the board and moves the ball all the way back to the Clemson 37 yard line. Bill? I agree with you guys. That deep, there should have been a grab there for the defensive on the defense there. He responded back. There was some separation, but that was caused totally by the defensive grab. Okay. So in Bill's view, that should have been a touchdown reception for Higgins, an enormous call. Pac 12 crew was under some scrutiny coming in because of the difficulties of officiating in that conference. Those kinds of pass interference calls are always judgment, and I don't oh, think they're called the same conference to conference, frankly. Yeah, Bill, like, see, to me, initially, you see that, to me, the pull of that jersey and then the re reaction from five, Vincent. See, there's the initial pull, and then he pulls back. How do you, how do you separate that when they both are you'll, interfering like that? You look to see who gains the advantage. Okay. You know? If I gain no advantage from it, I haven't done anything. Second and 25. Lawrence flushed, and he'll be knocked down right near the line of scrimmage by Patrick Queen. Len Logan also imposed himself in that play. Uh, Patrick Queen's been all over the field. He has had a great game. In the middle of that LSU defense against the run, they blitzed him at times. He's been out in space. He's played man-to-man. -man. 
a young man that didn't play early in the season. He was more of a guy that would come in and substitute by the Texas game on week two. He took over in the middle and was really having enjoying himself a great championship game. And Dave Aranda told us the most improved player in the defense this season. You're right, he's had a whale of a ball game. Leading 26 on third down, Lawrence escapes and bounces a throw. Trying to get it across the middle to Ross, who's been frustrated tonight. Just out of sorts, man. It, 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 it's throwing the football is so much about a rhythm, a balance. And I know he's got pressure, but if you look in the middle of that field, you got to give him a shot. Give him a shot to make that play. And he just has not been accurate tonight throwing the ball. If you think, Kirk, about last year's championship game when he completely outplayed Tua Tunga Baloa, everything went right. Yeah. Despite feeling awful, Lawrence played beautifully. A year later, a totally different story. 17 of 36, still hasn't thrown a touchdown pass. It's the fourth straight punt for this Clemson offense. They thought they had momentum after scoring quickly in the third quarter. You're watching the House Football Playoff National Championship presented by AT&T. The College Football Playoff National Championship game is presented by AT&T and in part by Dos Equis. Keep it interessante. Please enjoy Dos Equis responsibly and Northwestern Mutual. Spend your life living. Four post-game show coming up, including the presentation of the National Championship Trophy. LSU protecting a 17-point lead, 10-10 to play in the 2020 National Championship game. They believe a lot in the magic of numerology and signs down here. So they were thinking 2020. Hmm. We got a Heisman winner. The last one was old number 20, Billy Cannon. 60 years ago, three times 20. Sadly, Billy passed away May 20 last year at the age of 80. Four times 20. Are you with me? Yeah, well, Burrow preseason 200 to 1 to win the Heisman. Jeez. 10 times 20. Wow. <laughs> Good stuff. They believe in that stuff down here. Yeah. Right no, now, it all, LSU. Adds up. It all adds up. LSU just trying to avoid it, the turnover, where they kind of play that could turn momentum. Edward Solaire, who flat out just doesn't fumble, pumped into a blocker, kind of shoved him forward. It's a nice game. Of oh, the Sugar Bowl, back in 1959, New Year's Day, there's Billy Cannon on the halfback pass. The only points of the game comes from the halfback. There were six completed passes combined. They run on the old T formation. Some some more blue uniforms that game. That's a throwback there. Only perfect season for LSU football until perhaps this season. They'd already won the national championship before that win over Clemson. They voted before the Bulls back in those days. Edward Zilaire muscling. It'll be right near the marker at the 20. Yeah, looking down at these stats, you see that. Joe Burrow has 442 yards passing with five touchdowns and you go back to the way this game started the key to the game was not so much could Clemson cover because it's tough to cover these five receivers if you include the tight end in the back it was could they confuse the offensive line and could they affect Joe Burrow could they blitz him could they confuse him they did early but as the game has gone on give credit to LSU for making the adjustments because once he's had time Clemson has not been able to hold up on the back end. That was a spectacular second quarter and now with the clock running down coach oh not quite as quick as Dabo but he had, showed a good four step burst to get he's the time out. Right? Yeah, he's a lineman. <laughs> Take a break with him 8 51 to play 17 point game. Tonight's a &T best performance, Burrow, who broke records for his highest winning margin, has shattered a bunch more tonight. That's the first touchdown, Chase, then the scramble for a touchdown. Yeah, he's done a, a lot with his feet tonight, but what it's been lethal has been his ability to find those open receivers and throw for touchdown passes. The one-on-one -on -one chances downfield, receivers going up, Justin to the ball, helping him out. Five touchdown passes on the night, and he, of course, he ran for one, as you just saw. Trying to work the clock. Edward Zilaire takes off, darts forward, bangs forward, just doesn't want to go down. Gets out near the 40. 
Burrow with five touchdown passes tonight owns the record for a single season responsible for a total of 65 and in the BCS CFB era which began in 98 he now has a record 442 and counting. This LSU offense that had combined for 110 points in its last two games against Georgia and Oklahoma now going to play three top five teams and it's 152 points and counting in those three games and over 1300 passing yards. As long as I've been following the game I, I've never seen an offense with, with the perfect storm of a new system taking over for an archaic offense for like the last decade. And you see Joe Brady there on the left the passing game coordinator that brought that system in from the NFL and his time with the Saints and Sean Payton and Drew Brees. And you have a quarterback that understands it has the ability to process has the weapons around him. It's the most impressive offense that I think I've seen wow. in my life. That's a big statement man. And again the slant cut by Jefferson. See Bensminger is a powerful figure at LSU the man they call Slinger was a quarterback in the Charlie McClendon era. Obviously the family undergoing a tragedy when Carly McCord his daughter in law was killed along with five others in a plane crash in route to that Peach Bowl game in Atlanta. Steve finding out just before his team took the field for warm ups and an incredibly tough stoic guy coach through that game has been very supportive of his son Steve Jr. in the family's time of tragedy. He's just been a rock sure has. at Orgeron really ad admiring the strength of Vince Minger. He's a survivor. He's been fired three times as an assistant. He's bounced around. He worked at Clemson at one point in, in Tommy West era. Ball Not very start. successful there. But now to be able to five yard penalty still first down step aside put the ego away allow Brady the whippersnapper to come in there and is this tandem. Boy, you love to see Ensminger being part of what you call the greatest offense you've seen. And, and the guy on the left brings in a new offense. He wins the, the, the Broyles Award for the top assistant in the entire country. And Ensminger's call the plays. I mean, it's, it's a very interesting dynamic that they have, and it's unselfish on everybody's behalf. But the players have to execute the scheme. And Joe Burrow and these receivers in the back are exceptional. Here comes a flag a couple of them chase was defended by Terrell on that slant. If you can't stop him just grab him. That's finger a guy by the way who sleeps in his office. Four nights a week Sunday through Wednesday sleeps in the office gets about four or five hours sleep. Spends Thursdays with the family that's family day for fouls right. by both teams they will offset. An eligible receiver downfield offense number 68 holding of an eligible receiver defense number eight replay first down well, that, that's the potential pitfall of those those run pass options of you, know, you got linemen thinking it's a run call quarterbacks reading safeties coming down to help out he pulls it out to throw it and you got linemen eight to ten yards downfield so it's offsetting we'll just replay the down. Yeah, but that is great. I mean, I, you hear about coaches, they study film, it's late sometimes. Occasionally, they may stay over. Not him. It's part of the routine. Nice a week. That's part of the routine. I mean, how far away is his house? <laughs> Burrow hesitates, just flips it over the middle, and caught up in traffic was Chase. It's viewed as incidental contact. There is no flag. Well, you got linemen again downfield. 73 McGee. He's downfield by uh, about five yards by the time the ball's thrown. Brent Venables ran out onto the field. I think that's probably what he was pointing towards. Let's get a little ragged here, partner, in the fourth quarter. It sure is. LSU certainly feels comfortable where they are, just trying to work the clock. Already spent almost four minutes on this drive, only moved it 33 yards, but it's been about chewing away clock and taking away comes his chance of a comeback. That's third and second and 15 and Inbert Solero is going to be tackled behind the line I, again. Chris I just want to go back to this offense and what makes it I mean, we can talk about the scheme we can talk about those receivers but Joe Burrow is a, basically an assistant coach playing quarterback. He's a grad student takes classes online 
He's at the facility as much as the assistant coaches. Studies film, breaks it down, understands where to go with the ball, has answers. And so when you have a quarterback in a full progression read system that knows where to go and finds those matchups and throws the ball accurately with that skill, man, it's a, it's a great combination. It's very rare in college. You see it with Rodgers and Breeze and Brady, but not in college. Well, the man who wears number nine for the Saints in this building was the boyhood idol of Burl. He got a chance to meet at the Saints facility yesterday. That was a serious thrill for Joe. Not, not quite as thrilling as tonight, but it's been a heck of a week for the Heisman Trophy winner. There's Drew Brees, his son's coming over to say hello. And, and Joe didn't hesitate. You're the reason I'm a Saints fan. You're the reason I wear number nine. You're my hero. I mean, he just laid it all out there. And Drew knew most of those things, but I think Joe Burrow, one of the few times he didn't know what to say. You know, just kind of super <laughs> humble in the face of Drew Brees. Not often is he super humble, I might add. <laughs> But another kid from the Midwest who found his way to Louisiana. And like Breeze, who won the Super Bowl, of course. Burrow closing in on his championship. Boy, spun down. Racy McGrath races downfield. And the gunner for LSU grabs Rodgers. Clemson will set up at the 15, running out of time. And the Mormons bracing for a big party. Aerial coverage overhead provided by Goodyear, recognizing those who strive to rise above the rest. Goodyear, more driven. Inside of five minutes to play, and the LSU faithful inside the dome, standing and roaring for their defense, which has held Trevor Lawrence Kirk in the second half to five for 14 and just 37 passing yards. Well, it's easy to look at Trevor, and he hasn't had a great night with his rhythm. But these receivers have not played well or held up well against the LSU secondary. Lawrence takes off on a scramble, takes a big hit from Chase on, moves the sticks across the 25. You know, he showed so much courage in that Ohio State game, willing his team to come back and win. He takes a big shot there from Chase on, the enforcer of the LSU defense, gets right back up and trying to get points on the board. From the pocket delivers and Higgins makes the catch out near midfield in front of Stevens, but he hasn't been able to make nearly enough of an impact tonight. No, that time he looked much better, much more comfortable sitting in that pocket and, and letting Higgins clear over the middle, went over the top of Patrick Queen that time for that completion. Flushed again. Has room, makes a cut, pays the price, lost the ball. Lawrence coughs it up at the end of the run. LSU's got the football, and they got one hand on the trophy. Derek Stingley Jr. continues a brilliant freshman campaign with the fumble recovery. Delpit caused it. Yeah, Delpit knocks it out. That's the risk you take, you know. And you know, I love Trevor Lawrence for competing. You know, he takes off, he, he sees things open up, open up, he's being a competitor, right? He's trying to trying to find room to, to get uh, some yards to run and get a first down. The ball comes out clearly. Delpit does a good job of putting his shoulder pad right on the football to jar it loose. And there's Stingley, the corner, to pick it up. I'll tell you, this defense from LSU took a lot of heat throughout much of the year, especially after the Ole Miss game. But these last four or five games, it's been a different unit. Dave Aranda's done a heck of a job with this group. You can see Dabo Sweeney as Edwards Allaire bounces it down the sideline, just slides and stays inbounds wisely. You saw Sweeney and his quarterback, who's going to lose a game for the first time since November 17, 2017, when Cartersville, Georgia High was shocked by Blessed Trinity. His first loss yep. as a college starter, and Clemson's going to have their first loss in 742 days since this building when they lost the semifinals to Bama a couple of years ago. Right. How about Clyde Edwards, Hilaire? Instead of trying to fight to get a touchdown, he well aware of what the mission and the goal is late in the game, up big like this. He just slides, gets down, stays in bounds, keeps that clock moving. He's got it again. With that last drive for LSU, wasn't very sexy, but they did shoot more than five minutes off the clock and just about. That's it all. Down. You know, when you're up this big late, as competitive as Joe Burrow is, and as much as he just wants to keep the foot on the accelerator, just keep going. 
Yeah, they're, they're sensing it. They, they know they know where they're, what's ahead of them right now. It's almost party time in New Orleans. It always is, but this is going to be a really big party. And Coach Ed Orgeron, it comes from deep in the bayou, La Fouche Parish, where the shrimpers hang out. He pull oysters out of the Gulf. It's one of their own, a Cajun coaching LSU and a source of enormous pride for him. His mom, Rose, is 77 years old, and she couldn't be prouder of Ed. He's been all over this state. There's LaRose way down there in the biome. Goes up, Natchitoches plays his college football at Northwestern State, playing on that D-line. McNeese State begins his college career. He's with the Saints, coaching the D-line for a season. Went out to SC, where he was 6-2 and two as an interim coach, but Pat Hayden passed him over, and that was a stinging blow to him, but it all worked out pretty well for him. Absolutely. and I, we, I think we all, as college football fans, have to tip our cap to Coach O. I think a lot of people snickered, wondered, what, what are they doing hiring Ed Ordron? Didn't, you, didn't, didn't LSU see what happened when he was a head coach at Ole Miss? People made funny videos online about him and his voice. And you know what? All he did is keep working. He adjusted. He tweaked things. He brought in a new offense, surrounded himself with great people, great coaches, hired great players. First thing he's going to say when he walks off the field with Tom Rinaldi, he's going to talk about the great state of Louisiana. He gets it. It's a perfect fit as the head coach of LSU. On third and three, Burrow gets it out. It's off the hands of Jefferson. Besides saying go Tigers, he's going to talk about the great state of Louisiana. And you know what? With Alabama losing and Tua leaving, Right now, that SEC West, Coach O is thinking, why not us? Why can't we become the bar now, not just in 2019, but beyond? The way they're recruiting, facilities, the commitment they make, I don't see LSU going away. Well, they have dethroned the toughest out in the sport in the last couple of years in Clemson. Burrow's going to go away, and he'll be tough to replace. His fourth down play, Burrow flips it in the flat. Edwards Lair is going to get it and a lot more. And he'll stay in bounds again down inside the 15. And Joe Burrow, speaking of the state of Louisiana, coming down here, embracing this state and these people, spelling his name with an E A U X on senior day. Kirk, he will be able to walk across the bayou without getting wet for the rest of his life. You talk about a living legend as his parents embrace. It's going to be hard to find a match in the sports history. I mean it. I agree with you, man. I agree. And, and he needed to win tonight for that to be true, and he did. Yep. And seeing a shot of his parents, just want to say his dad has been, has been in coaching for 50 years. He's been in the game as a player, as a coach. Decided to retire this year as Ohio University's defensive coordinator. Edward Zolaire stays inbound, barrels down inside the five. Now he decided to, to retire. There he is, wearing number nine. He's been coach. All he knows is coaching ball. And instead, he wanted to follow Joe after transferring or transferring from Ohio State to LSU. He decides he's going to go to every game, home and away, with his wife, and take it in and be a fan, tailgate, hang out. Little did he know what was in store for 2019 with his son. They're pretty stoic. They don't shed tears. Any more than their son usually does, but it's been a tearful end of the season for LSU. The victory formation in the final minute. By the way, class move there by Coach O. It shows the respect he has for Dabo and for Clemson to take that knee instead of trying to put another one in. Well, it's a trifecta that very few have achieved. Win the Heisman. Perfect season national championship. As they say in the bayou, les it a bon temps roule. Let the good times roll. LSU sits on the throne of college football. And as they knock out the defending champs, an offensive onslaught, 628 yards.
the supreme confidence, the swag of this team in white, purple, and gold. Kirk, they backed it up tonight. They came in. I've never prepped for a game of this magnitude and felt a team as confident as LSU coming into this game. Me neither. <laughs> Ever. And you didn't know if it would blow up in their face or if it would end up being true. As you see, they, they, they had a feeling of what was going to come tonight. The confetti shower inside the Superdome is somewhere down there. Tom Rinaldi with a happy coach up. Chris, thank you very much. Ed, everything you've been through, all it took to get here. When you look up and you see that confetti fall, what goes through you? So happy for our team. This is about our team. This is about our coaching staff, about everybody wanting to put one go in the great state of Louisiana. I'm just so happy for everybody. Down for the first time all season by double digits. You come back. What did you learn about this group tonight? Seventh win against a top 10 team. Character, integrity, great players, great coaching staff. Will to win. Joe Burrow stood up on that Heisman stage and concluded his speech by talking about all you mean to him. Yeah. What does he mean to you? The world. Uh, he's one of the greatest players in LSU history. Uh, he's done so much for the state of Louisiana and LSU. We are so grateful to Joe Burrow. Finally, Ed, this team's motto, one team, one heartbeat. What does this night, this season mean to the heart of Louisiana from someone from here who represents it? That's what it's all about. Uh, I grew up wanting to be the head coach at LSU. I'm so proud for the state of Louisiana. We've had support from the governor, from the president, from everybody that loves LSU. I'm just so happy for the people from Louisiana. But you got to give the credit to this football team, man. They've been working for one year. They deserve this day. Go ahead and say it, Ed. <laughs> Go tag it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Joe, you said that winning the Heisman didn't mean much. It was this national championship game and bringing that title back to Baton Rouge. What does it mean to say that you've finally been able to accomplish that here in New Orleans? It's years of hard work paying off. This is, this is an incredible moment for our, for our program, for Baton Rouge, for Louisiana. Uh, this, is, this is just so special. I'm kind of speechless. You guys allowed Clemson to strike first, but you never flinched. Where did that confidence come from to know that you were going to get the win here tonight? Well, we thought we got down. I think it was 17-7. We never flinched. We knew we knew what we had. We, we had some tough breaks getting backed up inside the five a couple of times. They had a really good plan early. And, you know, once we figured out what they were trying to do, our coaches put together a great game plan at halftime, and we started to roll. We saw you coming back early from halftime, but you took a big hit going into the locker room. What allowed you to battle through that injury? There's no other option. Uh, this is a national championship. This is, that's all. I wasn't going to go sit on the sideline, that's for sure. You know, coming into this season, your dad retired to watch every single game, and he's been in the stadium celebrating with you. What does it mean to be able to win this national championship in front of him? You know, there's my dad won a great cup in Canada, but there was kind of this, this burrow curse. My brother lost the national championship. My dad lost a couple of great cups. I lost the state championship. Both my brothers lost state championships. You know, this is this is kind of our first one, so this is super special. Well, I see you haven't put the ball down, and after you threw your fifth touchdown pass, but set a record for national championship, you pointed to the ring finger. Do you know what size ring you wear? Ten and a half. <laughs> <laughs> we already got fitted for him. All right, well, it'll be coming soon. Congratulations, Joe. Championship rings. We said they were confident. <laughs> You now the Burrow family curse, if that existed, has been erased. A magic carpet ride for this program and this quarterback, and it ends right on home soil with a win in the Superdome. LSU champions, and it's a special kind of delirium when you're dominant and you're really, really exciting, and they are all of that. The Ford Post Game Show coming up. National Championship Trophy as well, but let's join Scott Pelpel, Sports Center. Chris, thanks so much. As you mentioned, the trophy ceremony coming. Coach O will join us here later in the show. LSU, the national champs, tested in a way they had not been all year long. This Clemson team, worthy champions, hadn't lost in 29. They had a 10-point lead on Joe Burrow. 
and LSU. But they throw haymakers. That's what Cole Kublik told me. Haymaker up top. It's Burrow to Jamar Chase, who had 221 receiving yards. And they lead after being down 17-7. A bit like the Chiefs on Sunday. What a play call here. Gutsy. Third and 10 out of timeouts. Trying to get in field goal range? The hell with that. Let's play the fight song and score a touchdown. Burrow runs for a bunch and then finds Thaddeus Moss with his Hall of Fame Papa cheering in the stands. 21 unanswered, but a big hit here as Burrow was wincing. Didn't want the medical attention, but at halftime, he's out there riding the exercise bike to stay loose. You wonder, what would the impact be? Well, Clemson, they answer with a touchdown to get to within three. This is a third and 11 throw to Chase. Chase is on the case to the tune of a 43-yard gain. They've got so many weapons, so many different ways to hurt you. Justin Jefferson hit by Skalski. And Skalski's big hit here. It's targeting. Ohio State fans remember just how brutal a targeting call was in their semifinal game. And for Clemson, they lose a key, key contributor just as Ohio State did. And they go back to Moss after Skalski's ejected for targeting. That's a touchdown. Berta Moss again, they take a look just before the left toe touches out of bounds. He's over the, the uh, end zone line to make it a 10 point lead and now up top again, it's Burrow. Terrace Marshall, his fifth touchdown of the game. He's got 60 on the season. The band played neck. French quarter incoming. I know you're built for a party, but you might be tested tonight like you've never been. A perfect season. Ten and a half is the ring size for Mr. Burrow. The confetti falls from the sky, and they are ready to celebrate. Trophy ceremony is coming. The Ford Post game will continue right after this. The Ford Post game is brought to you by Ford. Built Ford Proud. Welcome to the Ford Post game. Well, LSU fans, you can celebrate your 2020 college football championship with the largest selection of official actions college football playoff merchandise. Locker room and fan apparel at shop.collegefootballplayoff.com. Some confetti being collected by Joe Burrow. Yet another souvenir to go along with all those trophies and the game ball from the championship game. Welcome back as they set up this elaborate stage for the trophy presentation. Kirk, a, a chance to cap off this game and this season for the 15 and 0 Bayou Bengals. Yeah, just an incredible year. Uh, yeah, I was fortunate to call one of their games early in the year against Texas. It was a, a third down late in that game, third and 17, where Joe Burrow made a throw and a touchdown to Justin Jefferson. I think that was a, a message to the entire country that this was a different year, a different offense, a different approach, a go get them aggressive approach. And the boy, whether they were in Tuscaloosa, taking on Auburn, taking on Florida, anybody, that was their identity. And again, tonight, they got backed into a corner, didn't look good early, but just kept taking their swings until it finally paid off. Coach Joe agrees with you. He said that playing Austin, that's what I knew I had a team. He's right. And they yeah. went a long stretch of 25 quarters and never trailed in the Auburn game until tonight when they found themselves down double digits. No panic from Burrow. He said they had to take some time to figure out what Clemson was doing against him. And once he settled in, yet another massive night, 463 yards, five touchdowns. We just keep, you know, at the break, we were talking about, boy, that offense with Burrow, we've been talking about him all year. But let's make sure we give Dave Aranda and the LSU defense a pop. They, you know, they, they played well tonight against a talented quarterback, shut down those receivers for the most part. And, and as the second half wore on, you could see not just Burrow, but Dave Aranda and the defense really asserting themselves as well. They did what no opponent's been able to do to Trevor Lawrence. He looked out of sorts Hit. in the second half. Lawrence just six for 15, 58 yards, had the fumble late in the game that wasn't a huge factor, but him being unsettled by that defense was a huge factor. They were, they've been in the shadow of that offense. You're right, they hold Clemson under 400 yards tonight. 
and especially in the second half when the game, things started to get interesting. And it looked like, remember, when the second half started, LSU went three and out. Trevor Lawrence got the ball in great field position. They put a touchdown on the board, went for two, got within three. So we had a game in 28-25, and then that defense clamped down, and of course Burrow kept finding his receivers one-on-one, -on -one, and they're making plays. Ed Orgeron, as you said, doubted frequently, a punchline to many, that well-earned huge smile. He said that he's a progressive figure. He hired a guy when Brady was not yet 30 years old. And, of course, he came from the Saints here in this building. And it goes up to Patton Rouge and wins a championship, too. Imagine being Joe Brady at 30 years old. He's going to stay in Baton Rouge. There's been a lot of talk and rumors about him maybe going to the NFL or maybe looking for other jobs. He's so happy and so grateful to be where he is right now as the passing game coordinator of this offense. And, it's been fun to watch him this year, but 30 years old, world's in front of him. You know, his career's in front of him. Time for the party to continue here in the presentation of the National Championship Trophy down on that crowded stage. Let's get a Reese Davis to preside. What a tremendous night for New Orleans and the great state of Louisiana. As LSU is back on top, a splendid performance beat all four of the preseason top four teams, finishing it off by winning against Clemson and taking the national championship. And here to present the College Football Playoff National Championship trophy is the executive director of the College Football Playoff, Mr. Bill Hancock. Thank you, Reese. First, I want to congratulate both of these great football teams for their performance tonight and all during the regular season. And now on behalf of the conferences and schools, who managed the college football playoff. It's my honor to present the national championship trophy to coach Ed Ogeron and the LSU Tigers. Ed, like you often do, you almost immediately handed that trophy to the players. Everything about your program has been about the players. But I can see the pride in your eyes, the tears in your eyes. What's this like in this state that you care so much about to bring them a championship? You know, we love the state of Louisiana. I love this team. One team, one heartbeat, this coaching staff. Everybody that bled the purple and gold, the great state of Louisiana. This is for everybody. One team, one heartbeat, baby. At what point, at what point did you envision this being the goal, the ability of this team to win a championship? You know, I saw this team work for a year. We started working last January 17th. And at one point in the spring, when I saw our offense complete 80% of their passes on our great defense, I felt that we could have a great team. But when we made that third down and 17 against Texas, I felt like we had the players to win the championship. You said it was your goal to be the head coach at LSU. It's different to be the head coach and be a national champion. What is that like? Again, give credit to the players. I'm at the right place at the right time. You know, we get Joe Burrow, we get Joe Brady, Steve Ensminger, Dave Aranza, a Clyde Edwards Alaire, this offensive line that we have behind us. For sure, Lawrence, give them all the credit. Ed, congratulations, my friend. Well done. Maybe the greatest season that any team has had. Let's bring in Joe Burrow, the offensive player of the game, obviously. There hasn't been a quarterback in the history of this sport to have a season like you just completed. I heard you say your goal was never really to be a pro quarterback. It was to be a national champion quarterback. So how does that dream match up with what you're experiencing right now? Feels pretty good. Lots of years of hard work culminating into one moment with the best group of guys anybody could ask for. We've worked so hard for this. So many people put so much work into this from athletic trainers, equipment staff, players, coaches, chefs, dining room assistants. You know, it's, it's not just me or Coach O or the O-line. It's everybody in the, inside that building that, that gets a piece of this. Within the game tonight, when you guys go down double figures, what changed? Uh, I mean, we, there was no rah-rah speech on the sideline. There was no, 
hey, we got to get going. We knew what we had to do. We have a bunch of mature guys that understand the moment. We just had to go out and start executing better, and that's exactly what we did. They had a great plan coming in. Uh, once we figured it out, we started to roll, though. When you look back on this season and you've done everything is possible to do from a team standpoint, from an individual standpoint, what do you think this season, these last two years at LSU will mean to you? It's going to mean the world. This is what I wanted to do from the time I was five years old, was host, hoist this trophy. And bringing it back to Louisiana. I guess we're in Louisiana, but <laughs> staying in Louisiana, we weren't going to let someone come in here and steal this from us in our home state. We have a great, great fan base that came out and supported us. We're going to keep this thing right here. Joe, congratulations, man. Unbelievable season. Wish you all the best. Congratulations. The defensive player of the game, a guy who wreaked a lot of havoc for LSU tonight is Patrick Queen. Patrick, what, once you guys sort of figured out what Clemson was doing, what did you sense change for your defense against them? Uh, we just locked in, you know, we, we've been down it the whole season, you know, we just want to come out and prove a statement to everybody that we nothing to play with. Wait, no, you're definitely not anything to play with. What, when you look at what this team has accomplished, you beat all these teams that were ranked highly in the preseason. No team's ever beaten as many top five, top ten teams as you guys have. How do you put this season into perspective, what you just accomplished? It's a season I'll never forget, man. You know, we just came in a season, we already knew what we was capable of. Uh, you know, Coach O told us what we was going to do, and, you know, he stood by his word, and we got this championship. What does it mean to you to win it here in New Orleans? It means the world, man, to win in our state that we love, and we thank you for all the support. Patrick, congratulations. A tremendous performance by that LSU defense tonight. Chris, I'll tell you, the accomplishments from LSU this year, it's hard to find a team in recent memory that has matched the accomplishments these guys have, and they are the national champions. Reese, thank you. We saw Steve Ensminger, offensive coordinator, and his son, Steve. A moment of triumph for that family in a time of tragedy. And a smile from Steve Jr. Those haven't been too plentiful in recent days. What a night for the great state of Louisiana. And as Orgeron and Burroughs said, and the familiar LSU chant echoing inside the Superdome, and the party will spill out to the French Quarter and go until the sun comes up, and then some. School's out today and tomorrow at LSU. Go ahead and take the rest of the week off. Why not? No <laughs> doubt. You know, Burroughs said it. Clemson had a really good plan, and they scored first. This is a touchdown run from Trevor Lawrence. Shades what he did to the Buckeyes. And then Jamar Chase with this deep ball, Kirk. This one play really ignited the Tigers' offense. Yeah, Clemson came out looking like an experienced champion. But as Joe Burrow just said to Reese, they kind of settled in, figured out that three down line, one linebacker, seven defensive backs. And once they were able to calibrate that offense, they were tough to stop. But Clemson wouldn't go away. You know, the Tigers kept showing that the heart that we talked about, much like they did against Ohio State, had a lead there in the first half. They did. Higgins with that touchdown. And then Burrow with his legs showing his entire skill set tonight. Finding the end zone. And then Chase, who was just a stud. The Bolitnikoff winner. They couldn't guard him all night. No, he had a heck of a night, obviously, nine receptions, 221 and two touchdowns. When Burrow found him one-on-one, -on -one, that's who he typically looked up. Here in the blitz, took a big shot from James Skowski, but he throws to his one of his best friends on the team, Thaddeus Moss, for a touchdown. Here comes Clemson. They needed to get back into the game in the second half. Their defense got a three and out. Offense put points on the board. Looks like they're coming back, but there's another one-on-one -on -one matchup that Joe Burrow just cannot help himself. He's got to take. Skalski would get kicked out of the game for a targeting call, deflating blow to that defense. And Trevor Lawrence, as we said, after halftime, just could not get it going. The onslaught continued. Burrow. Moss again, one of his best buddies on the team. His dad, Randy, looking on tonight, just able to break the plane before stepping out of bounds. And Joe knew that one was it. Ten and a half size ring, already been fitted. And he'll get that soon enough. Lawrence loses for the first time as a college starter. Consoled by Dabo Sweeney and no doubt back to try to hunt another championship next year. We've talked so much about LSU and deservingly so, but that shot right there, that'll be a lasting image for me in the offseason. It's Clemson team that dealt with a lot of unrealistic expectations, oftentimes not living up to what they did last year against Bama. People, as far as the outside world, they're going to have plenty coming back and plenty of motivation to come back next year. Another trophy for Burrow.
course, won the Heisman and five other major awards. But that championship trophy is the one that he says he's always dreamt of. And it's no doubt the most precious. 42-25 in the Superdome. LSU undefeated national champions. Boy, we have enjoyed bringing these games to you all season long. A massive thanks to all of our production team. Bill Bunnell produced it. Derek Mobley directed it. We thank Bill Lemagne and Dave Kataya for helping us out with the rules all season long. Darren Brown, Mike Black, Mark Amento, Gary and John up here in the booth, and every single person on this team. Much like Joe Burrow, this is a massive production for us too, Kirk, and we thank each and every person. So for Tom, Maria, for Kirk Herbstreet, I'm Chris Fowler saying so long for now from New Orleans. We'll have post-game coverage on SportsCenter. LSU! National champions, 15-0, a season like we have rarely, if ever, seen in this sport. The Ford Post Game is brought to you by Ford. Built Ford Proud.